yeah, so today we're going to start a new fortress. The last one failed miserably. Um, we had some uh, camel-related fatalities. There is a camel. Um, we checked the history logs afterwards, the Legends viewer. And um, there's a camel that's killed 15 of my dwarves. Uh, there's some other camels that have entered the Legend uh, for how many dwarves they've killed. So I thought that maybe we'll do something a little bit different. Obviously... Um, the changes to agitation and the changes to how aggressive the wilderness is now compared to how it was uh, in the previous version uh, means that I'm not very well prepared to deal with uh, wilderness because I just don't really expect it, right? Like, um, that fortress kind of died really unexpectedly. I wasn't expecting to be, like, rushed by, like, Zerg rushed by, like, five killer camels. I just really wasn't expecting it. Although I had seen it from other people, I just thought that maybe... Um, they were being like really doing a lot of stuff on the surface, and I didn't think I was, but um, you know, I think maybe I need to reevaluate like um, how I build my fortresses and kind of how we approach that. So, we're going to start a new fortress. Um, we're not going to embark on an evil biome this time, um, you know, obviously. Um, you know, what's the definition of insanity? It's trying the same thing over and over again without getting any better results. Um, but I also wanted to make sure that we're going to embark somewhere interesting. Um, so um, I was looking around the map. This is the same world as before. So we may see some new dwarves uh, pop up. Although we are going to be using a different origin civilization because we're going to be embarking in this region here. And um, if you look in here, you'll notice we've got the mountain range. There's a little bit of evil up here. Uh, there's a dwarven necromancer tower there. You know, there's some spots of stuff over here but this area here is more interesting um so we've got humans and goblins as neighbors and um what's actually interesting about it is if we click into advance you'll see that this is a mirthful uh, area and over here we got joyous wilds so um in dwarf fortress there's evil biomes there are neutral biomes and then there are um good biomes and i put good in inverted commas here because it doesn't necessarily mean that like they're good to settle in or that they aren't harmful but they're biomes that are filled with things like unicorns and you know mirthful creatures um so i thought it'd be interesting to embark in one of those because we haven't done that yet we haven't seen what a good biome looks like in steam in the steam version of dwarf fortress now um this biome here it's split between a joyous wilds area on this side closer to the mountain and then on this side there's a light aquifer zone uh, this has got a heavy aquifer, this has got a light aquifer. So what I'm thinking is, is that we'll do an embark that is uh, half on the Joyous Wilds and half on the Murphal Wilds, just so that we don't have to dig through the heavy aquifer, um, and instead we can just dig through the light aquifer on one side, and then we've got the Joyous Wilds on the other side of the embark as well. So we'll get a little bit of both, um, but it does mean that we might see some interesting things in terms of um, like those... Um, you know, like the like the the zombies and th we're we're not going to have zombies, I should say, uh, but we are going to have goblins, and there's also going to be that interaction between like the savage wilds, and we'll probably get attacked by like hordes of agitated unicorns as well. But this is going to be our opportunity to learn how to deal with that, um, because obviously um, it's something that we need to figure out before we can really go back into like a, a terrifying biome, because clearly uh, I'm not having much uh, wrong with it. Um, we got murdered by camels. <laughs> That's the that is the single sentence answer to that question. What what went wrong? Uh, we got attacked by camels. Um, several of them, in fact. Uh, they they rushed my they rushed my fortress before I even noticed and killed. Um, uh, one camel killed fifteen of my dwarves. Uh, and is it is in fact in the history legends now. So. There's every possibility that one of our dwarves will make a, a, a statue of the camel who is famous in the universe for murdering uh, thousands of... Uh, actually, I need to just check this. Uh, murdering thousands of uh, people. I just want to make sure that we've got the right... Uh, that we've got the right civilization. I want this civilization here to be the target civilization. No. Yeah, this one. So the Portal of Pax. This is a different civilization than the one we've been using before. Um, but we, we're embarking in a different location, so it's just uh, important to make sure that's right. Um, but yeah, so I'm thinking we're going to go... Um, let's see if we can look at elevation. So it's a little bit. Maybe we'll go here, because I think we'll have some elevation here. Um, so to the north, there's kind of like the joy, the mirthful wilds, and then to the south is the joyous wilds. Um, and we should have a mix of light aquifer and heavy aquifer. Um, so that should be fine. Um... But yeah, we'll embark manually as always. I'm going to put economy and enemies on hard because I think that it does seem like um, this actually has a bigger impact than I thought it did. 
Um, this might be part of the reason why we're struggling so much because if it's maybe that makes camels incredibly deadly. Um, but for now, I'm just going to put it on hard because I think I should be able to deal with it. Economy on hard is fine. Uh, dwarven economy, it's like it's it's pretty pretty easy to deal with generally speaking. So I think that we should play with a hard economy and we'll keep enemies on hard for now. Camels, of course, yeah. Um, but yeah, so let's prepare for the journey carefully and uh, we'll go with a pretty similar loadout this time. Um, so the last time I brought um, a dwarf, well, a couple of times ago, a stream ago, I brought a dwarf with a hammer with me. Um, I'm wondering if it's worth bringing a militia dwarf again um, and maybe kitting him out with some armor this time just so that we can have the foundations of the military right from the get-go. And um, given how brutal like some of this is i actually think that might be what we do today so i'm just kind of thinking about what i'm going to take with me we're going to take a brewer planter and um same again maybe we take a fisher dwarf with us this time um because it's not gonna we don't we don't have that problem with um the undead you know this isn't an undead biome there's not going to be any zombies in this one we don't run the risk of like necromancers although to be fair we haven't actually seen any undead in any of our previous uh, campaigns so far, any of our previous fortresses. <laughs> what a very that's a very clever pun, Jake. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> oh man, what a world we live in. Um, anyway, yeah, proficient woodcutter, carpenter combo. I like that. Um, we've got our two miners. Um, I'm gonna make them both engravers because I prefer to have my miners also engrave. Uh, even though I don't really need to do that. Engraving's not an important thing. We'll make a stone cutter and stone crafter. I'm still not quite sure what stone cutting and stone carving do in particular, but we'll just go with that. So we've got two farmers, a woodworker, a stone crafter, and two miners. I'd say those are the most important things. Um, we could take a mechanic with us, uh, but mechanic is one of those things where you don't really need like a skilled mechanic. It's just nice to have. Uh, we could also consider taking like, uh, oh, we don't have anyone who's doing any woodcrafting. Maybe we'll take off stone cutter here and we'll give this guy woodcrafter. Although actually, I think stone, I think stone carver actually, I think stone carver is now for masons. I need to check this out because they changed all the names and I still haven't figured it out. We'll just go with that. We'll make this guy into a woodcrafter. Um, do we do we take a military dwarf or not? Hmm. I feel like if we do this properly, we shouldn't need to. But at the same time, I kind of feel like I've had so much trouble recently that it wouldn't be a, a miss to just have a dwarf who's a military dwarf. And we can always have him learn stone wood crafting anyway. We can just set him to craft as well in his off time. So why don't we go with an axe dwarf? Uh, last time we did a hammer dwarf. This time we'll try an axe dwarf. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to give him some points in... Um, not in fighter, no. I want him to have points in armor user. Uh, army user army user and proficient axe dwarf so this guy's going to be an axe dwarf maybe bring animals instead of military dwarf i mean i guess we could do we could bring like war um war um war dogs i guess uh like that's a possibility i don't usually bother with animals to be honest like my 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 impression of animals has always been is that they're they're weaker than they're worth uh, and that's always been because the kind of opponents we fight are things like zombies or goblins, right? And I just feel that, like, a war dog, it, it's not going to kill a goblin because the goblin's going to be wearing armor. But in this instance, we're fighting a lot of wildlife, so maybe there is some value in taking war dogs. Let's do it. Let's try it. We'll take a couple of war dogs this time um, with us, and we'll have those, and hopefully they'll be able to butcher any unicorns that come near our fortress. How are you enjoying the profound success of your DF series on YouTube? I'm really glad that people are enjoying it. That's all I can say about that. Like, um, it's it's been nice to see uh, a lot of comments from people, a lot of people, you know, interacting with that. Um, and it's just nice to see all around. Like, um, uh, like I've, I've said this before, I wasn't really expecting it. Uh, and I know, you know, like, um, I, I uploaded something that gets, like, 4k views in a day that's that's incredible to me and uh, you know I'll, I'll keep doing it so long as people are keep interested in it um i'm not the best at this game uh <laughs> i think anyone who's watched this should have figured that out by now i'm uh, i'm not the greatest war fortress player in the world but i do love this game quite a lot and uh, i think it's nice to be able to um you know like kind of explain my reasoning for why i do things and you know hopefully that helps people with their fortresses maybe 
Um, and then people can tell me in the comments, <laughs> you know, what, uh, you know, different things that I've missed, and then I can use that information as well. So that's always good, you know. Um, I, I'm, I'm really happy that there's so many people, the, the community's done quite well. Um, you know, it seems to have really uh, kind of gotten out there and people were trying this game. And um, I think this is a game that's well worth trying if you've never tried it before. Um, in the past, it's just been really difficult to get into. But now, um, you know, now it's um, it's a lot easier. So if you've always wondered, you know, like about this game, it's a great time to try it. So, yeah, that's that's, that's what I have to say on that, I guess. Um, we'll take some... I'm going to take a bit of leather because I usually do this, don't I? Um... Let's take wolf leather. I I I just realized I took some ducks, didn't I? Uh, geese. Um, maybe we can take a. Do we take geese? No, we. I'm gonna take hens with me instead. Um, and I'm gonna take. Uh, yeah, there we got. We got the two cat. We're gonna take duck. Uh, duck chickens. No ducks. I can't make my mind up. Uh, we'll just take hens. We'll take hens. I want egg production. Um, so I want those. Yeah, she can't bring animal camels as an armed force. You can train camels. Um, you can train camels. That's 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 hundred percent possible. Um, see, is there anything else that we want to take? Like, um, we could take some plants. Like, we could take some strawberries, for instance. Uh, maybe we can even grow strawberries in this biome. It depends. I guess what we'll do is we'll just take some more food. Just fill out that uh, miscellaneous stuff there. Um, so we'll take some, um, you know, let's just take some random food. So we'll take some fish, take some sailfin molly. I've never seen that one before. That's a new one. The items that you have available in Embark are partially related to what sort of stuff is available in your civilization. So your starting civilization items will impact um, what kind of stuff is available. Um, like if a bumblebee venom is available, for example. God, bumblebee venom. Uh, oh right, yeah, that was it. We were going to take some uh, mil military equipment, weren't we, for our for our for our dwarf? So, actually, um, I completely forgot about that. I gave him a bunch of military skills, and I haven't actually taken any weapons or armor for him. Um, and weapons and armor are quite expensive. So let's just go with a. Um, We've already got a copper battle axe. We'll go with a slightly better than copper battle axe. We'll go with like an iron one. Or not not a silver one, but an iron an iron battle axe here. So we'll give him an iron battle axe. Um then let's just uh let's get rid of some of the stuff that we got here. So we don't need that many hens and roosters. Uh, we'll just take four. And uh, I'll sack off the um I'll sack off these. I don't really need those. So we can get some more points. Because we're gonna get some armor. Um, we're going to just go with copper armor. We can make better armor later. But if we give him like a helmet and uh, some maybe a chest body, then that would be good as well. So, um, yeah, we'll go over copper helm. Or we could go over bronze cap. Um, bronze helm. And that's for headwear. How much is body wear? Let's go over bronze mail shirt and a. Um, we'll get a bronze helm. We'll need to save some points somewhere. Um, one of the things that we can get rid of is we can get rid of the wheelbarrow and the step ladder. Totally useless. You can make those really easily yourself. They're not useless items. They're just things that you can make really easily. Like if we we can we can just tell them to make wheelbarrows. It's it's trivial. So you know, compared to like a bronze helmet, for example, that's a bit more involved in terms of making that. So bronze metal shirt, bronze helmet, and then we'll go for bronze um, uh, bronze greaves and. Uh, Actually, not bronze greaves. We'll go for bronze chain leggings, and then just uh, copper greaves, and I'll finish it off. That's a, that's a decent selection of armor. It's not everything, um, but it's a it's a good start in there. So I think we've got everything that we need here. Um, we can take a little bit more. We'll take a couple more fish, and uh, quick little tip: uh, just take a bag of sand with you if you got a point left over, because that'll give you a free bag. Okay, um, so what's the gimmick here? The gimmick here is that we're embarking in a good biome. <laughs> Not an evil biome. Uh, hey, Euristo is just playing DF. That's good. Hens are an excellent choice. Brylix wants to be the Militia Dwarf. Okay, well, we'll embark and then we'll go through the requests as always um, once the map's been prepared and we've had a bit of time to look at it. Um, so here we are. 
A dwarven outpost, you have arrived after a forbidding journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness beyond. Um, your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of all of Mr. Mishigo. Oh, and our fortress is called Machine Schools, by the way. Oh, we got dingoes as well. So uh, dingoes in the area. Um, so this is our this is our area, and you'll notice it's very blue. That's because this is a joyous wild zone, and it's a joyous wild mixed with a mirthful zone. If I remember correctly, so if we just have a quick look at our map here, now we should be able to zoom in. Or can we not zoom in on the map? Oh, we can't zoom in anymore. That's unfortunate because I, I can't exactly remember how the it goes. So I think. We might need to do some probing here, because there's two different biomes here, right? There's a... Um, there's a biome which is the heavy aquifer biome, which is the joyous wilds, and I'm thinking it's up here. Um, and then there's a biome which is Murphal, which doesn't have a heavy... Um, which doesn't have a heavy aquifer, it has a light aquifer. And um, we want to dig in the area which has got the light aquifer because we don't want to have to deal with a heavy aquifer. Heavy aquifers are a real pain in the arse. Um, there's no other way to describe it. Let's have a look at our creature list. So, um... What? Ardlo... Okay. Right. Um... So... There's a giant. <laughs> a giantess, in fact. Um... So th this is something that can happen, it's actually kind of rare. Um, you can embark on top of a cave, and a cave can have a resident. You might not even know that you've got one here. So like, um, unless you've embarked in a biome that's got a, um, a, a one of these caves in it. It's even got some weapons in You can see here it's got a silver boning knife. Um, so where is that cave? Like, that... It's right there. I have a feeling this thing's going to charge at us the moment we unpause the game. It's going to notice that we're here, and it's going to charge at us. So let's very quickly sort out our neighbours before we unpause. Um, we'll do naming of people in a second, because, like, um, this is going to be pretty nasty. Uh, we don't want any fishing. <laughs> Nobody does fishing. Everything else is fine. Um, so we're going to have to go and sort out our military. So uh, let's immediately appoint a militia commander. So let's open up our noble screen. Uh, we're going to appoint the uh, dwarven peasant here as a militia commander. Do some bard dom militbash. And we're going to create a new squad. Um, I'm going to give them no uniform, but that's because I'm going to manually edit the uniform myself. So add a uniform, and it's going to be... Um, just going to be Axe Dwarf for now. Confirm and save uniform. Details. Oh, wait. I'm still getting used to this new um, this new menu, so you'll have to uh, bear with me for a second whilst we do that. And that's not what I wanted. So how do I actually do this? Sorry, just... Uh... Axe Dwarf. Details. So, um, we want to give him some uh, armor. So, the specific one that we had was uh, bronze armor, sleek vest, jagged breastplates. We brought a male shirt with us. Um, and uh, we also want to give him a new weapon, individual choice weapon. Actually, this is going to be one thing that we have to consider is, uh... Ah, come on. I actually found this easier to do back when it was, uh... Back when it was, uh, the, 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 the old one. I actually thought that was easier to do than this, but that's just because I'm not, I'm not used to this one yet. Um, so, we brought a bronze metal show of us. Um... We brought leggings. We brought greaves with us. We didn't bring any gauntlets. We brought uh, we brought greaves with us, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, those go in legwear, don't they? Oh, do they? Yeah, they do. Greaves, and then um, we also brought a helmet, new weapon, 
specific weapon, yeah, we want him to use the iron battle axe. And new headwear. And uh, just any helm. So we don't care about the materials because it's all subject to change. Next war, confirm. So when we unpause, he should go and equip that. And let's set this to schedule. So um, ready. Equip always. So we want them to always equip and sleep barracks at need. Yeah. Okay, so let's unpause the game and see what happens. Can we recruit the giantess? No. Um, is Joyce Wilds like actual rainbows and unicorns and stuff? Yes, it is. <laughs> Can you just flood and drown the giant? Um, the thing is, is that the moment we unpause, I'm pretty sure the giant is going to path towards our dwarves. So, in fact, um, I'm just expecting that they're going to immediately try and attack all of our dwarves. Like, I think that's what's going to happen. So I just unpaused it, right? Like, I just paused it for a second and I've re-unpaused it. So let's have a look and see if the giant moved at all. Oh, wait, is it sleeping? Because if it is, I've got an idea. Okay, um, I think it's sleeping. I've got an idea. i got a very clever idea. Um, we're going to cut down a tree. And that dwarf to cut down a tree. Alright, where is it? Where is it now? I know it's it's Hmm. Okay, let's try this. I might be inviting disaster here, but I'm also gonna because I need to get this resolved quickly because I don't want it to become a problem later. Alright. Who's going to be the brave sod who does that? <laughs> I assume you'll be paving and burning the entire place down. Uh, my plan is just to build a floor over the top of where the giantess's cave is so that they can't get out. <laughs> and then we can dispatch it at our own le le leisure whilst we do the basics. Uh, that's my plan. Um... And it worked! <laughs> okay, yeah, so the... So I guess like my understanding of like um cuz my my understanding would have been that he would p immediately path towards us um like he would notice that we're here and immediately try and attack us. Um I don't know if the giant test needs food or not. I guess we'll find out. Uh... <laughs> no, we can what we can do is we can so you know the giant test is here, right? It's on this level here. So we can always just um we could we could even build our fort over here and uh, we could just prepare for it. Like, what layer is this? This is Sandy Lone Wall. So, is this going to be an apical layer, perhaps? Lay, ginkgo tree roots. Um, because there is also the aquifer that we need to consider. We might even be able to just breach through the aquifer without actually having to get through it. Because we've got this cliff face here. So, it might be that if we dig here, for example, um, that we get through the aquifer that way. Um, but I'm not exactly sure. We've also got hematite on the surface here. So, we've got surface hematites. Um, we've got microline, limonites, kaolinites on the surface here. Um, so we could try and just dig through here and see if this actually reaches the aquifer. So let's uh, quickly send someone to come dig this. So we're looking for that. We're looking for the announcements about it being damp. But it looks like at the very least we've got this stone layer that we can potentially work with. And this is also where the, the, the giant the giantess's cave is. Um, so it doesn't seem that that's aquifer. Else, else, else like this would be flooding, for example. <laughs> so um, we've gotten that good, at least. Um, that's fine. I mean, the aquifer could be further down, as I suppose. Like, you know, I think I think aquifers have changed compared to how they used to be. So um, it might just be that it's like further down, and I just don't know where it is. Let's uh, go in this direction here, and uh, let's start designating some stuff to be cut down. So, um, Iron Throne time? Yep. Well, I don't know, possibly. 
So this is a good biome. So there are some unique features to these biomes that make them distinct from a haunted biome. They don't have weather in the same way that like a haunted biome does. There's no such thing as like a good weather. Um, we're actually nowhere near elves, funnily enough. Like someone mentioned elves, but um, we only have goblins and, he and dwarves as neighbors here. Um, but they do have some unique plants that can grow here. So um, I'm looking to see if there are any sunberries anywhere. I don't see any. But I'm not quite sure what they look like. I'm just hovering over some plants, but I don't think we've got access to sunberries, which is unfortunate. Um, they have some unique vermin as well, so you can have, you know, how like you have like creepy crawlers and spiders and things. Well, in this in this area, we can have pixies, um, or you know that kind of thing, uh, showing up and eating all of our food and being irritating. Oh, and also the fluffy warbler here, which is uh, a staple of dwarf fortress. Uh, whatever this thing is. Uh, so yeah, if you've never seen one of these, this is what one of them looks like. But it doesn't look like we've got access to sunberries, which is a real shame. Um, sunberries can be used to make sun wine, I think. I think that's the name for it. Um, and it's a really, really valuable kind of wine. Um, it's a really high value wine. Dwarves love to drink it. Um, but, you know, you need to be in this kind of area to even access it. Uh, we do have some really good surface plants though, so um, there'd be a good. We could we could definitely attempt to make like an outdoor farm at some point. Just looking at this here, um, the other thing that they have is they have unique creatures, um, which includes unicorns, but can also increase include other things as well. Um, so yeah, um, but yeah, everything's fine. Uh, Alright, let's uh, get the name sorted then. It's been 30 minutes and we still haven't done anything other than dig a little hole and, uh, you know, do that. So let's uh, let's get some names sorted, shall we? Uh, so, let's have a look at the reward request queue. Seven people have wanted dwarves. So, Earl Von Voma wants... Uh, oh, this is four days ago. I'll just reject those because that's uh, obviously um, old requests that I forgot to do earlier. So, Voma wants a smith. We still don't have a smith. So you're going to have to wait for that. Dennis wants to strike the earth, so that means that he can be a miner, because miners are the main people who strike the earth. Um, and Brelix wants to be the military dwarf, so that's fine. He can be the military commander for now. So um, let's see if he's actually picked up his items. Uh, yes, he's uh, he's picked up his uh, equipment. So you have your uh, mail shirt, your, bron your copper greaves, and your bronze helm. Um, you're missing your leggings. Um, I'm not sure why you're not wearing them, but that's, that's whatever. It's on you, I guess. Uh, in fact, actually, we'll have a look at that. And Feke wants a dwarf. I haven't seen Feke in a while. Uh, but we can do that for him. So this is going to be for relics. And creatures... Becky wants a nice dwarf. Um, he can be, he can be an, he can be the other miner. How about that? And uh, Commissar Kitty also wants a dwarf, so we can do that as well. Uh, we'll go with the, let's go with the Stone Crafter. How about that? Okay, I think that's everything. Um, we're all good. I'm just going to quickly see about uh, this equipment because I'm not sure why he's not wearing those. He has been assigned them, so maybe he might just be going to collect them. So that, but that so that's fine in that case. So yeah, the other thing that's uh, useful to know about these biomes is that you have access to a special kind of tree. Um, so you see these white trees here. They're called feather trees. They only grow in biomes which are good. Uh, and... Uh, <laughs> maladapted dwarf block um so um those those sorts of trees they're actually really valuable so um they make the best possible beds that you can make um they are they are really 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 good uh, and we're going to make all of our beds out of them normally i wouldn't care what my beds are made out of because it you know there's no there's no there is difference between different kinds of trees but uh for most trees it's only a matter of weight so for example like a um there are certain kinds of uh, trees that weigh more than others, and that can be an issue to consider. So let's see if we've been lucky and we have just immediately skipped the aquifer. Alright, we've not got any... Not getting any cancelled digging designations. So 
So yeah, it looks like we have been able to skip the aquifer. Uh, but I, I mean, it could still be further down. We're going to take this very slowly until I'm until I'm confident that we're past the aquifer, especially the, the kind of kind of issues that we've had in our previous uh, fortress. But in any case, we have got levels that we can work on. Like this seems to be a non-aquifer level uh, where we can build some stuff, and um, you know, it looks like the next level is also non-aquifer. We found tetrahedrite, so we've got copper, uh, we've got silver, we've got. Uh, you know, we've got all these kind of good stuff. We've got some good, you know, got limonite, which is an ore of iron, I think. But yeah, so I've, uh, I've done all the dwarves now. I think that's uh, a total of six dwarves with names and then one dwarf who doesn't. Oh, that just means that someone else was digging it. That's fine. Um, but yeah, so we got a pretty decent start. So uh, why don't we start with... Um... Where are we gonna what are we gonna start with? Well we could start with our farms and um now this is tricky because like uh we can't Oh you know what we could do Hey this is clay So this is clay here This is clay stone and clay so this might actually be where the aquifer level is Oh oh is that what I just saw? Um, I, I think I just saw native platinum somewhere. Yeah, native platinum. Okay. Let's dig down some more. Um, we need to know the lay of the land. Um, and um, once we've done that, I can make some decisions about how we're going to um, how we're going to approach this fortress. Um, but yeah, if anyone's got any questions or anything, um, just always ask. Uh, I'm always happy to answer them uh, about this game and about my thought process. I, like, like this level here, it could be, maybe. It might just be because of the different elevations, so we've, in effect, skipped the, the aquifer. No, that's inappropriate because it's damp digging square, not because it's uh, wet. So here we've got dolomite. Dolomite is great because dolomite is a flock stone, uh, which means we can use it in the production of steel. Okay, I think we have gotten... Okay, so um, if this then is past the aquifer layer and we do have some clay here, maybe we could dig towards this and we could potentially turn this into a... Um, we could potentially turn this into a farm. Now, I am still pretty scared that this is going to be aquifer. Like, I'm, I'm worried that there's like a transition here where this turns into aquifer. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to come up to, um, I mean, this is clay here. This has also got clay here. This has got luminite. There's clay there. What we could do potentially would be if we were to carve like a staircase down here. Dig this staircase here. Oh yeah, I, f I keep the game. We have to designate it over multiple levels. So I can't, can't just designate the top part. I have to scroll down. Um, let's take it to here for now. Then this would mean we can dig this side here, and we've got this access tube here, which isn't going to get flooded if we accidentally flood over on this side. Um, so that's just what I'm doing here. Is I'm just kind of like digging in two separate places. Um, so I can dig like some farms over here and if we can confirm that this is an aquifer to hell and back then that's really good but it just means that we don't run the risk of like um, you know flooding the stairway and then having to dig out a new stairway in the meantime why don't we try and designate some trees to be cut down and like I say we want to cut down feather trees in particular um, so we'll cut down this one here um, you know, all these beautiful uh, trees, these unique one-of-a-kind things that um, are very rare and only exist in certain parts of the world. We're going to cut them all down so that we can make beds out of them um, as uh, as Armok intended. Because if he didn't want us to make beds, then he wouldn't have made them so soft and sleepable, right?
Oh, wait, did I just kill the squad? Oh, I just... Oh, my God. I accidentally just destroyed the squad there. Um, and he just unequipped all those items. Oh, God. I, I thought that was to close the menu. Now I have to do all this again. Because I'm an idiot. Do... I had to close it there, because cause like, I'm looking at that and I see that X and I think that's to close it out, but that's just uh, me being uh, daft. So here's the clay. So um, there should be some clay over here. Like here's there's some clay stone, but we want we want actual clay because that's what we're going to use to dig. Um, so why don't we we'll dig this out here. We'll just see what we, we're working with here. Because it might be that this is the this is like like some kind of wacky aquifer that we're we're not familiar with. We could potentially flood like uh, this whole section here, so we'll we'll keep an eye out for the damp stone um, notifications. This will kill an up here, but if this is clay, then presumably there should be at least a little bit of dirt. Although this is all kaolinites by the looks of it. Now, if it is the case that this is Kale and I, and uh, we've just um, skipped past the top level, instead of trying to find an area where we're not going to hit aquifer, um, you know, because aquifers are usually in like the clay kind of layer level, the soil level, which means it's kind of dangerous for us to dig there because um, we could end up flooding something. And keep in mind, there is a heavy aquifer here, not just a light aquifer. So it's not like the one we saw before. Um, there are ways that we can kind of work around that potentially. Um, one thing we could consider doing would be to, um, so, yeah, see, it looks like there's a light, a tiny little bit of clay cavern here, but it's not very much. And there's, there's definitely not going to be enough to build a farm on, for example. What we could potentially do is we could potentially pump water into an area where we could then build a, um, then looking at it here, what would, actually, what we'll try and do first. There is there is more kind of clay over here, so we'll we'll dig to here anyway. So this this level here um, is the one that's just above the the river. So if we were to pump water into it, we could potentially pump some water there, and uh, that would be a good level for us to try this on. So um, we'll dig down here. Potentially we could refashion this as a room for the military. So that could potentially be a barracks, right? Because it's quite near to the surface without being on the surface. So this level here is the level that's above the uh, water. So we can dig that out. <laughs> A lot of digging in this fortress. Let's make a stop pile here for now and uh, accept that. And we'll just put all of our food down here. I'll give the rest of our dwarves something to do whilst uh, this is being dug out. Oh, and that reminds me as well. On labour, I don't want any of my miners to be haulers. Um, so um, I only want my miners to mine and do any other things I told them to do, like uh, engraving. But I don't, I don't want them to be hauling things because that's such a such a waste uh, of their time. It's really irritating when you have a dwarf who's supposed to be mining something critical off and then he decides he's going to go and drag some uh, bricks up a staircase. So uh, we just preempt that by preventing them from being able to do it. <laughs> okay, so we've already got some combat going on. 
A uh, Peregrine Falcon Man is fighting a... Whoa, that's a lot of Peregrine Falcon Man. Um... Okay, let's let's try and avoid like an open conflict with the with the with the animal man population of the fortress. Let's move, let's move our dogs downstairs so that they're not trying to fight and pick fights with like weird bird men. Um, let's just build a uh, we'll build a pen and pasture here. Except, and uh, we'll just assign um. We'll just assign our war dogs to this uh, pasture so that they that they're not trying to fight with anything that's near them. All right. So now that this is dug out, we're going to dig over here. Hey, John. Welcome. So this is a this is a thing that you get. We didn't actually see this in the other in the other. Um, we didn't see this in the other Savage Biomes Fortress, but um, you can get animal men and animal people showing up. So you can have like bear men, like packs of them, or packs of other things showing up, and uh, it can be something that can be quite concerning, um, especially I think in this patch. I've been learning Dwarf Fortress this week. How's it been going for you? It's uh, it's a game I've been playing for a while. I wouldn't say I'm an expert at it, but um, it's a game that I enjoy quite a lot. So um, it's really nice to see so many people trying it out for the first time now that the Steam Edition's out. Pretty great so far. Yeah, it's um, it's it's such an open game. There are so many different things that you can do. Um, you know, there's all sorts of different tricks and just like kind of like cool things that you can do in this game. And I can't really think of anything else that's like it in those sorts of terms. It's been giving me lots of ideas for writing Dwarven Settlements in D&D. Uh, &D. <laughs> um, I mean, that's certainly one way to look at it, but, like, um, I don't know if it's just my Dwarves, but I always think that, like, Dwarves and Dwarf Fortress, they're not, like, they're not like Dwarves in other settings, right? Because, like, uh, Dwarves and Dwarf Fortress, they just do some really daft things. You know, like, Lord of the Rings Dwarves are stoic, they're great craftsmen, you know, they build wonderful, uh, be beautiful things that are admired by all. Um, dwarves in Dwarf Fortress, they die because they were trying to collect uh, free socks on, from the battlefield. Um, so it's like, you know, you have that kind of dichotomy between like um, like a more traditional dwarf and then like a Dwarf Fortress dwarf. He's basically like a moody teenager. <laughs> but, um, you know, like I do I do love this game so much. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it, it's, definitely, it's definitely good. Like uh, you can definitely draw that kind of inspiration. Um, I've never actually played D and D myself, by the way. Like, um, I've I've only ever played um, Call of Cthulhu. That's the only like role playing game like that that I've ever played. All right, let's uh, let's throw some let's throw some workshops down here. We can actually get started with uh, our fortress proper. I think it's fair to say that we're not going to run into the aquifer. So um, we're going to start with um, a. Uh, we're just going to go with a workshop, um, a farm there. I'll make two farms here, and then I'll probably make another farming pot somewhere else. And these farms are going to be farms that I'm using for booze. So uh, we'll stick another farm here. And uh, we'll then grab ourselves a couple of workshops, which is going to be our booze-making ones. Uh, so we need the still. So that's under farming now, isn't it? Yeah, so uh, keep building after placement and select material, because I don't want them to use tetrahedrite to make these. Claystone. Claystone, that's fine. And then let's also dig out a uh, room back here. And this will just be a stockpile for them to put, like, um, like booze in it once they're done with the booze. Or maybe seeds. We could do with a seed stockpile. Maybe we build a, a small seed stockpile here. Like, it doesn't need to be very big. Um, just like a small stockpile for seeds. And this is all tetrahedrite as well, so, you know, mining this out is great for us. Um, so let's do that. Uh, click and drag here. Made this a custom stockpile, and uh, we just want drinks in here. So drinks, plants, all. Um, can you actually make bumblebee mead? If you can make bumblebee mead now, that would be one of the weirdest bugs that they fixed, but it would be a bug fix. Like, um, you... Like... 
I, I'm pretty sure this is correct. In 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 previous Dwarf Fortress, you can make mead but not bumblebee mead, <laughs> um, because dwarves can keep bees but not bumblebees. Out of their honey, obviously. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like you know, it's like goat cheese isn't made out of goats; it's made out of goat milk. <laughs> Um, or kangaroo man cheese, um, which is which is not something they will ever try. Uh, I don't think we'll ever be making that. All right, there we go. See, so, yeah, drinks. So we just want to put drinks there, and uh, yeah, we'll make another stockpile here, which will just go in here. All the seeds. So uh, seeds is is that under food? I think it is because I think they they consider seeds to be a type of food. Yeah, there we go. And we'll just sing out all seeds here. There's a seed stockpile and there's a drink stockpile. <laughs> yeah, two humped camel man cheese. Uh, you can make lots of very interesting kinds of uh, food and drinks in this game. A actually, no. Um, a dwarf wouldn't be capable of making kangaroo man cheese or uh, yeah, because uh, okay. I, I, actually, I'm not going to say the reason why because it sounds really disgusting. Um, but it's not possible. <laughs> I know for a fact. I know. I know that that is not possible within the way the game works. Uh, okay. Um, old three port wants a new dwarf. We'll uh, we'll do that. Do we have an opening? Do we have an open slot for a free dwarf? Um, I haven't missed anyone, have I? Let me just check my uh, rewards request queue. Um, oh, Roma wanted a dwarf, but we don't have a dwarf for him yet. So. Um, yeah, so we'll, when so we can we have a couple dwarf anyway, so we can make three ports to a farmer. There we go. So yeah, so we've got a very basic sort of fortress coming on. Uh, we put all of our dogs inside so that they don't cause any trouble. Um, we've got a basic farm set up over here. So the first one we want to do is we're just going to grow plump helmets, and we're just going to do that season round all the time because you know you always want plump helmets as a fallback. And then in this pot here, we're going to grow, um, I think we'll grow sweet pods, um, just summer and spring and summer. I'm not going to grow anything on autumn and winter. I don't think, I guess we could, Kate, I guess we could do, no, we can't. We could, could do dimple cups, I guess. Well, dimple cups are kind of not that useful. For anyone who's wondering, dimple cups are used in order to make dye. Uh, they're used to make blue dye specifically, which um, you can put on clothing to make the clothing more valuable. But um, it's like it's like a, it's such a it's such an annoying process to go through with that. Like I wouldn't I wouldn't usually bother, so I don't. Um, you know, I'm a bit lazy. Um, but that's uh, that that's what it's for. So you can use them in order to make blue dye, which you can then attach to um, your uh, your other dwarves. Over here, we're going to make a farm, which is going to be quarry bushes and uh, pigtails. And up here, we're going to make a farmer's workshop, which will be used to process them. Okay, so we will go to our workshops here, farming. Uh, and then we want a farm plot. So we could just do, uh, how, how are we going to do this? Hmm. We don't need massive farm pots for these, uh, so we'll do that. Then we'll do that. We could even fit in another one over there, and then we'll put in a couple. We'll put in a workshop over here, um, farming, uh, and this will just be a not a metalsmith's one. Workshops, farming, uh, farmers' workshop there. Just made that out of claystone. So we'll have that workshop there, and uh, they'll be able to come. And uh, we could even put like a, a small, small stop pile over here. So this will be growing, just to just to stop stop how like the, the pigtails, whatever have you. So this is uh, only even farrow. So we want this one to be quarry bushes, quarry bushes, quarry bushes. Then this one, we want this one to be um, summer. It'll be pigtails, pigtails, and then this one here can be uh, cave wheat, cave wheat. Um, yeah, and these are all the plants that can be processed into more advanced things. Well, sugar pots can also be, but 
yeah, that's fine. I, I know it's all split up and a bit weird and not very efficient, but um, I'm just trying to use the space. I, I, I probably could have done a bit better job of it, frankly, but that's fine. Um, we'll place a new stockpile over here, which will just be for um, probably for quarry bushes in particular. Uh, I think those come under food, or actually pigtail. Um, pigtail come under... I have no idea what pigtails come under. Pigtail thread. That's thread, though. We don't want it to thread. Um, well, I mean, they can put thread there, but that's not what I'm thinking of. Pigtail sheets. See, now I thought maybe they come under actually mill plants, fruits, and leaves. Plants. Ah, pigtail. Yeah, there we go. So it is under food, even though it's not a food. Can't eat pigtails. And uh, we can also go for quarry bushes in here as well. Quarry bush. Quarry bush and leaves. Yeah. So this is pigtails and quarry bushes. Pigtails uh, slash quarry. Bush. Big tail slash quarry. That'll make sense. You have a hunting dog who's hunting a white rhinoceros and winning. Uh, that's interesting. Um, like, I, I wouldn't do that myself, but uh, yeah, like, uh, you know, fair play, <laughs> I guess. Uh, okay. Um, right, bedrooms. Where are we going to put bedrooms? Now, uh, we do have this weird kind of two corridor system going now. Um, because we built two different staircases because I was worried about the aquifer. And then I tried this one over here and we've been able to build farms on this side. Um, I wasn't expecting it to hunt a rhino. Fair, fair enough, fair enough. I uh, I, I appreciate that. Um, so we could just connect these up now because I'm pretty sure that we've not got aquifer on this level. Um, so that should be fine. Watch me flood this. I'll, I'll, I'll end up flooding this. You'll see it. In a second. I guess if we did accidentally flood it, we'd just dig an opening here and then we just flood all the water out onto here and we'd be able to try and fix it. Uh, are these blue are these unicorn lands? Yes they are. They are in fact unicorn lands. What we'll do to make sure that we're not gonna accidentally dig both sides we're not gonna accidentally dig um both sides. We can go into here. So we can use the number designations here. So four is what you it's seven is the lowest possible priority. So we'll set this bit here as the lowest priority. So that means that they won't dig this bit out until last. Um, they'll dig everything else except that bit last, which means that they can't flood both sides at the same time. But yeah, these are unicorn lands. Um, we've already had some interesting encounters with the local wildlife uh, in the form of, uh, well, you can see here, there's a bunch of uh, falcon women flying around in the air. Well, they're, they're, they'll basically be harmless because I think they're pretty skittish and they will be afraid of uh, of us and our fortress and our dwarves. What we could do here, we could even make a... Um, we could even set up a... Because um, we've got access to here, right? So we could we could set up like a an area for us to keep our sheep. So if you were to hypothetically set a pen pasture here, um, let's just say, you know... Could be could be that big maybe, and we accept that, and then we were to pasture our ewe and ram there. Uh, we could set them up. We can also just put the horse and the yak cow there for now, and then we could dig out a um, we could dig out a kind of like a path towards that. So we could dig out like a path towards that. And then we have like, we can wall this off. So we could have this walled off so that things can't get inside our fortress this way. Um, but we got a way that dwarves can, you know, we can put animals out there and they'll be, they'll be safe from the elements. Ah.
could actually, nope, before you do that. Okay, but in any case, they'll dig this out first because I set that as priority for priority digging. Then they'll come dig this out last. And uh, I should also clear that bit because I don't want them to dig that side yet. I don't want them to actually breach the surface yet. Okay, but in any case, we do have a decent setup here. We're going to make a fairly big fortress, I think. Um, so what are my priorities going to be this fortress? I know that we didn't really manage to do any of the things I wanted to do with the last fortress. So um, I'd say one of the things I want to do is I want to do a beekeeping industry because we've talked about that on several fortresses now. Um, there's a couple of other industries that I'd like to do as well, but, you know, we'll see what those are. Um, has anyone got any, like anything that they'd want me to explore in detail because i'm happy to you know go through different industries and try and explain them a bit um we can always try and set up uh, anything in particular if anyone's got anything they're interested in because there are so many different kinds of labors and things you can do in this game and um you know they're all very variety crystal so like gems and stuff yeah we could set up a gem industry and uh, we could try and make some really valuable beds perhaps or try and make some really valuable stuff in the fortress using gem encrusting that could always be an interesting one to go down. Yeah, that could definitely be an interesting one to try. Um, it's not one I usually bother with, to be honest, because I always find it a bit fiddly. Crystal Glass Palace. <laughs> yeah, we could build the Crystal Palace. Although, you know what happened to the actual Crystal Palace, right? The actual Crystal Palace, which was an actual thing that actually existed. Yeah, fun. <laughs> Precisely, it burned down. Um, so, um, you know, we could try that, but I think we might suffer a similar fate if we're not careful. Maybe we could build some workshops on this level as well. We could have a whole bunch of stuff on this level. Instead of building it all, like, really vertical, we could try a bit more of a horizontal layout this time. Um, which could be interesting. So we could build some, uh, like, uh, like we got this kind of area here. Um, and we could try something a bit different. So let's see how big this area is. We've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Oh, that's perfect. That's as if I planned it. That's that's how perfect it is. Um, because this, uh, we could do my usual setup here, um, but have it so that yeah. Oh, that's that's great. That is. Um, That's actually perfect. So yeah, we could do that. And then we could have like, um, so this has just been like a row of uh, workshops here that we could have. And we could have quite a few of them just in here. And then we could have like a big stockpile of stuff on here. Um, and yeah, that, that is exactly what I would want it to be. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six on both sides. So, that's 12 workshops to start, and that's plenty of space to do it in. And uh, we can even have, like, uh, like uh, access doors here and here so that they can get in both sides. Watch me accidentally flood this thing. I'm still really scared about this aquifer, which I don't know where it is. Like I'd be more, I'd be more happy if I knew where it is. But I feel like I'm about to breach it every time I start digging. Like I feel like, oh, this is gonna, it's gonna be like a single aquifer tile, and then whoosh, the whole fortress is gone. It's just, uh, just flooded with like, uh, uh, flooded into misery. Let's make a carpenter's workshop first. Alright, so we've got the two carpenter's workshops that are being built, and then we're going to place another one here. Um, we'll go with stone workers' workshop. We'll try not to make everything out of clay stone because it's really not a very pretty looking stone. Um, we'll try and make it out of something else, maybe microline. Although, I don't know, maybe. Maybe it's got a certain charm to it, perhaps. Being really mean to clay stone today. Um... Rustic Fort, yeah. 
I mean, it's kind of, you know, it's a kind of nice, it's a kind, nice, quiet fort. We're not having any too much, you know, too much trouble, are we? It's a, it's a nice, friendly fort with friendly folks and friendly faces in it. Definitely not going to get charged and killed by unicorns, he says. <laughs> I'll have to check back in like three or four hours. Uh... All right, and then we want, um, we'll have a couple of crafts workshops just on this side here. We'll have a couple of spaces here for, I don't know what we'll put here, maybe some uh, ash workers forms. Uh, there's some workshops where you don't need many of them, so like, uh, let's get a jewelers. Let's do it. Let's get a jewelers. Yeah, a couple of uh, jewelers workshops set up. Because we said we'll try it. Um, we'll get a mechanics workshop here. Have they made the have they made the screw press into it? Okay, the screw press is still a one tile workshop. Okay, that's interesting. Because it didn't used to be considered a workshop; it was considered a machine. Um, so that's interesting. Anyway, soap makers workshop. Ooh, good grief. Um, and uh, yeah, we've got two jewelers workshops. Um, we could just make a bowyers. I don't think we need one. Because you see, the thing is, is that if I was making bows, I would make metal bows. There's actually a bug with um, with archers at the moment uh, where they won't pick up their ammunition. So I would strongly advise against building them if you can in this in this current patch. Um, what else could we build? Um, build like a, a wood burners, I guess. We'll just uh, yeah, we'll build a wood furnace here. Maybe we'll do some pottery industry as well. That could be interesting. So you got these here. So we've got the wood furnace here. We could build a kiln, um, which is used for clay collection and for... Yeah, let's try it. Let's uh, set up a kiln. Uh, we'll just make all of these, and then we've got them. We can always come back to them later. Can't be worse than the camel attack. It could, it can be a lot worse, actually. <laughs> you know, just just saying, it can, it can in fact be a lot worse than that. Um, so we'll put that in here. So this is just, oh, actually, I don't want this to be one big stockpile, do I? Well, maybe we'll make this into a big wood stockpile. We can make all the stockpiles for other things. The minecart killing the people assembling it. That is a classic, that is a classic Dwarf Fortress one, that is. Alright, so we're getting them to build the Woodstock Hall there. Um, we're not going to open this up yet, because I I guess we could. You know what, we could do that. We'll have to build two different bridges uh, in order to block off the fortress, but we may as well, because it'll save them time when moving around. Pottery full of booze to survive. So, um, pottery allows you to collect clay, uh, which is an infinite resource, by the way. Um, clay is an infinite resource in this game. Um, and you can make it to make crafts, you can make it to make statues. Um, so we could actually start doing that. Um, you know, there's some instruments that will have parts that you can make out of clay. Um, there are a couple of different kinds of clay. Um, I think there's two different kinds. There's porcelain and then there's earthenware. So porcelain is made from kaolinite, which is uh, a stone. So we've seen it a few times here. Um, I might be getting some of this wrong, by the way. I haven't checked. Uh, I'm just doing this from memory. But um, we definitely have seen kaolinite. Um, so this is kaolinite. No, I don't know. It's somewhere anyway. Kaolinite is a stone that you dig through. Um, and you can use that to make porcelain, which is higher value than earthenware. Um, earthenware is uh, just made from clay or red clay. It doesn't really matter what kind. Um, but um, the thing about earthenware is that um, it needs to be glazed in order for it to be able to hold a liquid. So um, I don't, yeah, you can see here it requires a glazing task here. Now the glaze itself, I can't remember what that's made out of. I think it's just made out of wood. Um, so I'm just actually going to check that. But you glaze it with ash um, and uh, then that will allow it to hold uh, that. Um, Oh, you can also use a tin glaze, which is when you glaze it with a metal. Um, but I don't think it actually has to be tin. Or does it have to be tin? Oh, no, yeah, it does. It has to be tin. 
Uh, it has to be Cassiterite. So um, we can do that. Um, we can glaze it with ash or glaze it with tin. If it's glazed with ash, it's worth more than if it's glazed with tin. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm not quite sure why, but there's probably a reason for it. Um, but we could do that. Like we can make some uh, earthenware pots, for example. Um, you can make like pearl ash, which is, um, which I think is used as a. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's you use that in the making of glass. So if you wanted to make glass, you use pearl ash. Um, you also got plaster powder, uh, plaster powder, which is for hospitals, and quick lime, which is for the production of things like um, sheets of paper uh, made out of vellum. So like uh, you know leather working into into writable paper and sheets. So that's the basic industry. So uh, yeah, and sorry, I just went on a huge digression about pottery. Yeah, this game has got loads of different materials. It's got loads of different weird little industries that you can do. It's really quite fascinating in that respect. Uh, let's just start by making a few doors. Um, I'll make these ones out of uh, claystone. So we'll make a claystone door. Uh, I wish there was a copy task button. I know that there's a repeat. We'll just put this on repeat. Uh, we'll start making some claystone doors just so that we've got some. And uh, we'll also start making beds. So um, we also want to make beds out of feather wood in particular. Um, so we'll just set those both up. We'll set those both on repeat. I'm here for the ta rambling tangents. <laughs> if that's what people like. Um, but yeah, so you've you got all these different industry chains. And there's not really any advantage to making things out of pottery compared to making them out of wood. It's just it's just interesting. Like you can you can have all these different things, you know, you can sell pottery crafts, you can do wax crafts and you know, like, uh, there's just all these different options that you have available to you, and that's one of the things I like about this game quite a lot. Um, it's just the just the abundance of choice. You know, you have a lot of choices open to you, um, just a lot of different things that you can do, and that's always nice to see, right? Over here, I'm just going to... This is just going to be a place where I'm going to put my chickens. So I'm just building a small room for my chickens to be in. Right, and then uh, there we go. So we'll set this as a not a pit or a pond, or a pen is a pasture. Pen, pasture. Set that, and uh, we'll stick that with um, both our roosters and both our hens for now. I start building doors. Place stone doors, and uh, we'll also need some nest boxes as well. Well, I only need four of these, and I don't care what they make them out of, so we'll just tell them to make four of them. Actually, I kind of do. I kind of want them all to be made out of the same thing. But it doesn't matter to me that much. <laughs> With the beekeeping industry, will be up and running any day now. Any day now. Any second. So yeah, so uh, we can cut gems um, and polish stones, and we can encrust gems into things. Um, so we can encrust our finished goods or our furniture with gems and with cut glass and things like that. Um, so, oh, we've already got migrants. We've already got a decent chunk of migrants as well. And looks like we've got uh, a new mason, we've got a fishery worker, and we've got a dwarven child. Um, so that's cool, I guess. Just once before I forget, we need to also set up a couple of workshops over here. And these are just going to be... Um, so we need a leather worker, butcher, kitchen. Um, we'll also build a fish workers workshop here. We could set up a fishing platform over here, actually. So we could even set up a platform for fishing. Um, and we could even have like a... Um, so if we were to do that like there, we could even have like a um, a fish a fish cleaners workshop maybe here. We have a couple one two three one two three, and then we could have some uh, we could have a stockpile for fish over on that side.
I always find, by the way, that um, if you... Um, I've seen a lot of people who've played this game and they kind of... Um, they accidentally flood their fortress because they can't tell where the water is and where it isn't. Um, I find it's really helpful to turn on this option here. Um, and that'll change the display to show water levels. And I think you should have this on all the time anyway, because this is how the game used to be, by the way. Like, um, in ASCII Dwarf Fortress, you could tell where water was because it's just a bunch of blue sevens. But um, we can see that, and then we know that there's no water here. It's just open space without even having to, like, confirm. Um, so if you're having trouble with that, just click this button up here. Um, and that'll turn it into the num numerical display for water. Really helpful little thing you can do. And it'll tell you exactly how flooded it is, because, you know, it goes from 1 to 7, so... Um, yeah, it's not necessarily the case that just because there's the water there that it's, like, all the way to the ceiling, for example. And uh, let's also go and cut a few blocks, maybe? Well, we don't need blocks, do we? Do we? We can make some blocks. It's efficient to make blocks. Add new tags, make rock blocks. Again, we'll just make claystone blocks. Uh, do water levels ever rise? Yes and no, I guess you could say. Like, um... <laughs> um, it looks like a rabbit's fallen into the water and is getting killed by a snapping tail. I'm not sure how that happened. Um... The answer is yes and no. Like, uh, like this water is never going to rise because there's nothing that's going to cause it to rise. You can see here, it's just the river that flows through the, the, the map. So it flows from north to south, and then it goes off the edge of the map here. But like, yeah, you know, we could pump the water out. Uh, we could pump the water and do all those sorts of things. But there's not like flash flooding and stuff like that. There, there are pressure mechanics and they're a bit complicated. Like I couldn't go into the full sort of detail on them and I don't know all of them myself. Um, so you need to be careful, especially when you're messing with aquifers, for example. Um, you know, you can accidentally cause problems for yourself, but, uh, and like, this river is not ever going to rise up and flood the fortress, so we don't have to worry about that. That's why we can open the fortress up on this side, um, without, you know, without, without it being a concern, basically. Um, so that's that. So what do we want here? We want to make a... So this is going to be where we have people being able to fish. They'll be able to fish the river from there. And um, we then want to have a couple of workshops in here, which will just be for our fish cleaners workshops. So those come under farming, I think. Yep, fishery. Make everything out of claystone, because I have basically done that at this point. And then... Um, in this stop pile here... Set that to custom, food, fish, all, unprepared fish, all. And then they'll, st they'll store unprepared fish in here. Um, I will put a door on this stockpile as well because um, there could be an issue where fish aren't being cleaned fast enough, which cause could cause miasma, which is like uh, always a risk. So um, we want to make sure that there's not going to be any instances of miasma like seeping out of there. Um, use close material because all the doors are the same. Uh, so we'll put all those there, there, and there. So we'll get all these doors down here as well. And now we need to start thinking about bedrooms, which is the next thing that we want to do. Um, we set up the very basics. Now we need to set up our bedrooms for our population of 10 dwarves. So where are we going to do our bedrooms? Are we going to do them up here? We could do them on this Dolomite layer, perhaps. Um, this would be a decent area to do it, I think. And uh, we do want to carve out... Uh, we do want to mine out Dolomite, because we're going to use it for our Flux Stone. And uh, we might find some other interesting stones down here as well. Um, so if we start digging this out, we could make this into a decent area for our beds. Um, now, this is a good biome, so I think... And uh, I think you guys might agree. Because we're in such a joyous and wonderful place uh, to be... Uh, we need to give our dwarves good bedrooms, right? Like um, this, we can't we can't go with these typical like tiny little rooms that we give them. We'll give them the the, the three by three experience. We're going to go really extravagant here. Uh, we're going to give them the full three by three experience. I I think that's the I think that's what these dwarves deserve, right? They they deserve that beautiful, um, beautiful beautiful experience. So uh, yeah, we're going to go three by three on here. So I'll have, um, we'll, we'll start with uh, 10 bedrooms 
on this side and then we can do 10 bedrooms on the other side as well when we get a chance uh, but that's one two three four five so that's 10 bedrooms and uh, we're going to give them all uh, we'll, go, we'll give them all a cabinet a chest and a bed that's how nice we're going to be to them salt pizza um salt pizza is that oh that's just used for making furniture so it's not used for anything interesting I need to check actually, because um, one of the things that they changed is they changed the way that economic stones are considered. Um, so if you go to your labor tab and go here, there's stones and then there's economic stones and um, and other stones, right? All of these stones here, um, they don't have any particular use. Um, some of them are magma safe, some of them aren't, but they don't they don't have any special special use these ones can all be used for different things um and we can disable them for non-economic use so it'll, it'll default to allow dwarves to make things out of limestone and to allow them to make stuff out of dolomite and um, we're going to tell them that they're not allowed to do that because we want to save those for the for our steel industry later on um so we don't want them making doors out of like you know that um there is one that's worth mentioning on this list which is marble um, marble can be worth making stuff out of um, because marble has a higher value relative to other stones. So marble is actually worth a decent chunk compared to like, um, I don't know, like uh, any of these stones like rock salt. A statue made out of marble is worth slightly more. Or at least that's what I remember. I could be wrong. Again, if I am wrong, I'm sure someone will correct me. But, um, you know, that that... That that is something to consider. So um, it's not it's not the end of the world. Like we got there's 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 like an infinite amount of dolomite available to us re realistically. Like if we mined out this entire level, we'd probably have more than we'll ever use. But uh, I'd still prefer just to make sure that I'm not going to have to, you, you know, I'm not going to encounter that problem where it's all used up to make doors and things, uh, when it could be used to make steel. Uh, so yeah, that's the that's the kind of thing that we that, that's kind of one of the things that we're thinking about. Um, I'm also going to tell them to deconstruct the wagon, or do we tell them? Oh, why isn't uh, why isn't our squad here wearing their equipment? Equip their equipment. I want you to be wet. Oh wait, did it not? Did it not save when I told you to do it? Oh my god, mail shirts. Not a cap, it has to be a helm. Um, leggings. Uh, leg wear. Heaves. Uh, new weapon. No, don't do individual choice because you'll go and grab something daft. Uh, new weapon, specific weapon, the iron battle axe. Okay, so you should now go and get those. Also, just before I forget, because uh, the idea came into my head, I'll also make him a backpack and a flask. So we'll make a... Uh, where is it? Farming. Butchers. Workshop here. Workshop. Uh, farming. Tanner's workshop here. Workshops. Farming. Uh, kitchen there. Then the last one we'll put there will just be a leather shop. Clothing and leather. So a leather workshop just at the top there. Okay, cool. Your scheduled, you should be scheduled to be ready all the time as well. So you should then have your equipment. So let's have a look. Yeah, you've almost done. You've almost managed it. Um, yeah, I guess you. I guess you're having trouble equipping your trousers because he's already wearing trousers. But in any case, at least he's now wearing his equipment. Okay, so we should have made some beds anyway. Uh, we don't. Ha we need to make a stockpile room for us to actually put um, our 
the furniture that we make. So let's uh, do that. Let's actually make a big kind of a big stockpile room for things on this side. Um, so we've got our stockpile for wood, which is a lot smaller than this is. Uh, but that should be fine. We'll have plenty of wood in here. And uh, the other thing that we can do is we can start making bins. So um, I think that's under here, isn't it? Is it? I always forget where bins are. No, pots are here, but not bins. So stone workers, we can, we'll get to that in a second. I'll actually do it here. So make a um, make wooden bin. And um, I don't mind if they make them out of feather. They, you, you, you could tell them not to make it out of feather wood. Um, you know, so that you could save that for beds and stuff, for example. Um, but feather wood is also incredibly light. So it's a really light wood, um, which means that a bin made out of it will be very easy to carry. So um, that's another reason why it's decent to make it out of feather wood. Um, but yeah, so that's just another thing to consider. The other thing that we'll do now is we'll start building our bridges. Um, we're going to need two of them. So we want to go to our constructions here, and we want to go to our bridges, and... Uh, we're going to need one on the surface because we dug from the surface and we're going to need one here. So uh, let's just do that uh, like this so that it closes up here. Um, oh, I don't want to use the closest material because they might make it out of something daft. I want them to make it out of the bricks that we've been making because it's more efficient that way to make it out of bricks. Bricks are, bricks are more efficient uh, than... So every time they do this block order here to make a brick into... make make stone into blocks it'll, it'll turn one stone into four blocks so uh, it's always more efficient that way um i'm going to cancel the task just because we've got a load of uh, clay stone blocks now but uh, they can now start using those for constructions which is always useful and then we're going to need another one up here so that they uh you know so that that's that's also taken care of so constructions bridges And uh, we just want claystone blocks. So they'll go and make those. And uh, the other thing that we will want is we will want some um, mechanics. So we'll want to make some mechanisms. So we'll just make, a, just make a few mechanisms. We don't need loads of these. So we'll need one, two, three, four, five, six mechanisms for now. Uh, we've also got our um, chickens over here. So we need to make those some delicious and... Uh, some egg boxes. So those are in workshops farming. And uh, we stick the nest boxes over here. We've only got clay nest boxes, so... So they'll have those nest boxes there that they'll be able to lay eggs in, which our dwarves will be able to eat. And uh, we'll set up... Uh, do we not have any empty drinks? Have we not finished growing any plump helmets yet, or have they eaten all the plump helmets? Done something equally daft with them. What about sweet pods? We don't have any sweet pods. I mean, if they got extract from plants, then that must mean that they've got sweet pods. I'm not sure why they're not got... Oh, actually, what it's going to be is it's going to be because we don't have barrels. Yeah, sorry, I'm misreading this. Um, it's because we don't have food barrels. I was just assuming it was because we didn't have any um, food. Um, so let's cancel the wooden bin task. We don't need any more of those. And we'll just start making barrels. Um, again, just have that on repeat. And uh, once they made some barrels, we can then start brewing some drinks. Because we need to brew drinks so they can plant more, more stuff. Uh, so yeah, that's a, th this is a very basic fortress done, other than just the beds, uh, which we're going to place now. We've pretty much done everything that we need to do. Like, um, we got uh, we got loads, we, we got a very basic fortress set up. Um, the only thing we haven't done is we haven't built a trade depot, so we could probably do it doing that. Um, but yeah, like, um, I think I'll build that close to the surface up here. I think I'll build a trade depot here, perhaps. Although, that being said, I'm really cautious about digging any of this out now, because if I do encounter Aquifer, then I'll accidentally flood the fortress. Um, you know, that'll, that'll flow down to here, so we should actually build the depot over here. Um, there's good, there's a solid argument for building the depot over here instead. Uh, so I'll build it here, and uh, build that there. Oh, and before I forget, let's uh, also...
what kind of creatures we got on here? We got some peregrine, peregrine falcon man, but nothing too deadly. We can start building a wall along here to so that we can uh, enclose our sheep in that. I think our sheep keep getting spooked by stuff because they're not they're not here, and our dwarves then have to go and like re. Um, they have to then go and pull them back over here. Bit of a pain in the ass. So we're not too concerned about that right now. Look, animal repeats. Share animal repeat. Um. So yeah, this is going to be where we can have a depot, trade. Just place that in there. Uh, cancel that construction because again, I'm not doing it efficiently. Want to use claystone blocks for that. Remember when I said that claystone was not a very nice looking stone and now we've made almost everything out of it? Uh, let's, uh, yeah, we've made a whole bunch of doors as well. Um, so let's uh, cancel that door task. We'll cancel the bed task as well. I think we've got more than enough beds for now. And I look at all these beds we've got. It's just stacks and stacks of beds. And we've already placed a bunch of beds downstairs as well. But uh, we now have a very basic fortress set up with beds for everyone, bedrooms for everyone, food growing... All of the basic needs have been met. Now we just need to work on our defenses and uh, work on our industries and what we're going to do in the long term. So, yeah, like uh, like you see here, for example, we're kind of low on food and drinks. So that's going to be the, we're going to start actually producing those. Uh, but let's get these doors in first. Get all this done here. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make them chests and things later. I did say I would do that, but uh, for now, we'll just keep it simple. Uh, we'll apply that there. So they've all got a very decent bedroom. They've all got a featherwood bed, you know, made from a really high quality material. I've accidentally hidden that bed. Uh, let's unhide the bed. There we go. Um, autumn has come. Autumn means that we are going to get traders soon. I was hoping that maybe we would have like a basic... Um, Pottery industry open by now. Let's have a look at our dwarves. Is there anyone here who doesn't do anything of value? Um, well, we've got this dwarven child. How old's this dwarven child? Disdains peace. Uh, this three year old disdains peace. It's a shame they're not a bit older. They could perhaps go into the military, although they are frail. Um, we got this mason here. You are a mason. You're also a dabbling planter, adequate mason, dabbling carpenter, um, woodworker. These guys want to acquire objects, fight, be extravagant, and also pray. Those are things that they're all going to want to do. So let's uh, let's give them the opportunity in a little second to do that. Let's make this into a furniture stockpile. Let's make this into a, uh, where is it? Finished good stockpile, there we go. We've got some ram wool. They're shearing the sheep and they told them to milk the sheep as well. Um, so we should have some, um, we should be able to do that. Um, we can tell them to make cheese. I'm not sure exactly how you make cheese, actually. That's like a new one for me. Um, you don't do it on here. Oh, you do do it on here. So they have got, they have got some cheese, I think. Um, well, let's have a look and see, like milk. Milk, yeah, they got some sheep's milk. Uh, so we can make some sheep's cheese. Um, so anyway, let's get brew drink from plant and get that on repeat. i also set that one up on repeat as well. And uh, let's also set make cheese on repeat, because if we got some milk, we may as well make cheese. And uh, the other thing is this, that we want to then... Um, we want to spin thread. Put that on repeat as well.
Oh, actually, um... Right, um, instead of doing it here, um, what I remembered, I just remembered now, is that if we have a... Um... Oh, actually, I actually don't want to dig there. That's a bad place to dig. Knees and rotten milk item. Did you actually make any milk at all? Yeah, we did. We got some sheep cheese. We actually produced some cheese of our own. Um, very high quality cheese. Uh... <laughs> uh... Sorry, I just I just so rarely bother with like cheese and stuff. Like it's it's always it's always nice when you you do something that you don't normally do, right? Um, so what I was saying was was that we could. Um... It's a shame that we don't. I don't really have space to make a. Um... I guess I could make it here and then just. Hmm. No, I think that's too... I, I, I'm not even going to risk it. Um, what I'll do instead is uh, I'll uh, place it... Uh, I think a loom is a big workshop, right? So workshops... Loom, yeah, it's a 3x3 three three workshop, so it is a big workshop. Place it there. Um, so I'm going to build a loom here. And uh, the reason that I'm placing the loom here is it just um, it'll auto it'll auto spin any any cloth that we get um, will just automatically be turned into uh, any any yarn that we get will just automatically be turned into cloth, and that's what we want. Um, so, you know, like, uh, that's, that's pretty much one of the things that's really useful to have. So, you know, we, we automatically weave all thread into cloth. Um, we don't want to automatically collect webs. Although saying that, it should keep some thread for hospitals, right? Uh... Oh, actually, there is thread that you can get that can't be turned into cough. So if we get those kind of threads, then that's fine because they won't be able to be used as cough. But um, they should then set set up. Okay, there we go. Um, grim reminders, etc. So they re they they they're going to weave thread into cough. And they're also going to weave the yarn into cough. So we don't have any crafts that we could sell. We could just make some crafts real quick, just so that we've got something to sell. Um, I think we'll just set that up. So we'll set up an industry over here to make uh, some uh, crafts, in fact, yeah. So not the make, make rock crafts, where is it? Crafts, crafts, crafts. Oh, wait, that's the wrong workshop, isn't it? Yeah, crafts dwarf workshop, of course. To make rock crafts, we make... Uh... Yeah, so we'll just set that on repeat there. So we're going to have to make some rock crafts, and then that way um, we'll have those ready. Um, why aren't you using bins? We've got loads of bins, I thought. Unless we've already used them all. Yeah, they should be using bins for this. I'm not sure why a dwarf hasn't put all this junk into a bin. Unless, um, it's just taken them a while to do it. When will I learn the way of the Mahjong ma demon? Uh, probably never. <laughs> I don't want anything in particular off the diplomats. They want seeds. I'm not going to sell them seeds. You know, seeds is not within my gift to sell, I don't think. I am really surprised that no one's grabbed a bin from over here. There are a whole bunch of them that they could grab. Um, are they... I guess maybe they're really busy. Have they used bins elsewhere, like in any of our river stockpiles? Yeah, they have down here, so they are they are doing it. Can't process plants because we don't have any pigtails. They're planting the pigtails now.
Right, good. Um... Okay, they have started. They have started um, moving bins here. Okay, that one's got a pigtail rope in it. I, I don't want to sell them my pigtail ropes. Those are useful. What we'll do is uh, we'll set up a um, rope set up a rope here. So we're going to set up a rope here, and I'm just going to put a war dog on here. So if anything tries to sneak into our fortress this way, they'll they'll run into the war dog. Um, so I'll stick that there. Set up a straight war dog up here, and um, I might close this roof part here. But before I, but for the time being, I will um, place a rope and chain here, and uh, we'll we'll tie up another one of our war dogs to here. So that if anything comes through this uh, bridge, then uh, they'll encounter the war dog. They've got some quarry bush leaves. Alright, bins. So yeah, we have started to get some claystone stuff, but not much. Like, we got a couple, or maybe a handful of things. Um... Should try and make like an outdoor farm at some point. We've got dwarven wine, wine and dwarven rum, so we've got a decent mixture of stuff. Um, have we not grown any cave wheat? Kitchen. Don't brew those. Oh, actually, I did that slightly wrong. Um, places, labor. Where is it? Uh, it's and you are allowed to cook uh, quarry bush leaves. That's fine. Yeah, and you can cook all these things as well. Okay, so yeah, we've we we got the we got one of the stray war dogs up here now as well. Um, we've got some bins, uh, we've got some amulets, claystone amulets. We'll 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 need them a little bit more time to just get some more stuff done. Uh, we'll start digging out some more bedrooms over here, just so we got the bedrooms done. Like that. Because we'll probably do another migrant wave soon. I mean, it's almost winter. It's mid-autumn at the moment. I don't think we have a... We didn't have a migrant wave. We had a one in summer. We haven't had one this autumn. So we could we could always get an autumn migrant wave. One, two, three, four, five. So we'll dig out some of those there. Just to make sure that we got enough, uh, we got enough bedrooms. Got enough dwarves in their beautiful bedrooms. With their beautiful featherwood beds. Like, what's this guy's thoughts? He is blissful after sleeping in a good bedroom. Is Mr. Old Freeport. I slept in a bedroom. This could be bliss, he says. So that's always that's always positive to see, isn't it? You know, that the dwarves are happy about their living conditions. And uh, we'll also then start building down because we want to get ourselves some nice um, temples going. That's another thing we need, temples. So we can worship our deities. And uh, now that we've got a fishing spot as well, I know that I told them not to fish earlier, but uh, let's have a look at our fish uh, fishing situation. So, I might it might be the case that I want to get um, a couple more dwarves in order to do that. I mean, that's uh, we have got this novice, fi novice fisherman dwarf, but we need people to clean the dwarves as well, uh, clean the fish. I guess we can say that only he's allowed to fish. Um, uh, so only he can fish, but we just need to make sure that we set up a fishing zone. 
And uh, I'm pretty sure it, somebody will clean the fish. Hopefully he's just not going to leave them there in a pile to rot. Uh, you know, it doesn't really matter who we have cleaning them, just so long as we've got... You know, I don't, I don't want to have loads of fishing doors because I don't want them to overproduce fish. Um, because if they do that, there's no, there's no way in hell that they'll clean them fast enough, right? So if we have just one dwarf fishing, that means he's not going to produce more fish than we can eat, um, or rather more fish than we can clean, which will then just, uh, you know, they'll just, they'll just rot, and uh, that'll be really nasty. Let's see, figurines, we've got some figurines. Uh, bins. Oh, and one of the things I was going to do was I was going to make a backpack. And is it a flask? No, what's it? Um, what's the word for it when it's a, it's not a quiver, a water skin, a leather water skin. And uh, one of the things we could do, do actually is, uh, I know I said before that we weren't going to take a wheelbarrow with us, we're just going to make a couple of them now. So let's go to wheelbarrow, make a wooden wheelbarrow, just do that. Uh, we'll make another wheelbarrow there. Make three, three, three wheelbarrows, just like that. Oh, we ran out of logs, okay. Um, interesting, so let's uh, cut down some more trees then. Put that one down, put that one down, and we'll cut that one down. And so we'll cut down this ginkgo tree as well. We struck the microlene. Everybody's favorite. Everybody loves microlene, right? It's everybody's favorite. Uh, everybody's favorite metal, and not metal stone. So the other thing that we haven't done is we haven't set up our levers yet. So uh, we'll set up a one over here. The merchants are leaving soon. All right, let's let's just move our goods over then, whatever they are, and we'll we'll, we'll get some very basic tra training trading done with them. So um, we go to our not our bags, go to our bins, move that one over. And uh, do we have anyone who would be a good person to make into a broker? We don't have anyone who's particularly good at it, so I'm just for now I'll just say that anyone's allowed to trade. So we'll just have them we'll just have them move this over there and then um, we'll just trade with them before they leave. So let's quickly pause the game now that they got that there. So let's uh, let's very quickly trade with them. So what do we want to trade? We want to sell that, 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 um that, that, that. You know, just some of these saltpeter scepters and things, claystone rings, claystone amulets, um, claystone crowns, claystone figurine of some guy I've never heard of. Um, just all of this kind of stuff. It's just all junk. So we just want to get rid of all those. And um, let's see what we can get in return then. So uh, because nobody, because we don't have any skill in, we don't have any skill in actually um, trading. We don't know what anything. Well, we can see the values here. We don't, we don't exactly have a an easy time with this, so we're just going to go for a really simple trade, which I think will just be for some food. Uh, we're kind of low on food overall, so uh, we'll go for some meat maybe. Uh, that's forty. Well, yeah. So we gave them a really good trade. We just traded them for some food, um, just to increase the amount of food that we got, and uh, you know that will. Uh, I'll make them. That'll make them happy. So uh, yeah, we can uh, we can gladly do that and uh, and get rid of that item from there. So they'll come and they'll come and take all this food that we just bought off them, and uh, yeah, they get to take their uh, they get to take the uh, the 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 terrible claystone rubbish that we've uh, given them. So that's always good. This, she's exasperated because she got caught in the rain. Good grief, get over it. 
And yeah, here we've got um, Commissar Kitty uh, preparing some mussels, uh, which is good. And uh, yeah, so that's good. Let's link this up to here. And we'll just name this to Entrance Bridge so that we know what that is. And uh, we also then need to make another lever. So where are we going to make the second one? Um, could make it up here, I suppose. We'll uh, make the second lever. Because um, this is the one for the top as well. So we'll make that here. Um, so someone should come and place that soon. We'll go and place that. What tasks have we got going at the moment? We haven't got any tasks going, um, so that's fine. Uh, we need a manager. I'm going to wait until the next migrant wave before we start doing loads of building and stuff because I want to assign like a manager. So um, we want to link this one to uh, this bridge up here. So once they've linked this, I just instantly pull this one so they close the top. Oh, and speaking of which, the migrants have arrived. Uh, at least two of them, three of them. Three migrants, four migrants, five migrants, six migrants, seven migrants. Lots of woodcutters. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Five woodcutters in total have arrived. Seven migrants. And a miner. Wait, a miner's arrived? Oh, that is so nice. Um, it's rare to have like an actual miner arrive in a fortress. Um, he's an adequate miner, so he's not great, but um, you know, that's that's quite good. It's quite nice to see. Can never have too many of those. <laughs> there aren't any elves near us, so they're never gonna get annoyed at us, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Yeah, the traders are leaving, so you can see they're packing up all the stuff, like all the stuff we sold them, and then once they've done that, they're going to leave. Looks like I might have become a malcontent. Um... Fuck. No, you, you're, you're really happy. Um, you're incredibly happy at the moment. Um, I think you're just happy that you've been able to destroy some trees. You're you you you're one of the four happy 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 dwarves in this fortress. We were going to build some temples down here, weren't we? Because that that this will be something that we can do in order to make them feel better. And um, as always, we're going to try and make our temples look nice because they're temples. Uh, you know, what's the point of having a temple if we're just going to make it look like a... You know, you could do that and that would be a temple, right? You know, you could set that as a temple. But it's all square. We need to... Like, we need to make it look at least a little bit interesting. So, um, you know, I like to vary the shapes a little when, when we do stuff like this. And and even that's better, right? Like, uh, you know, it's a bit bit more of an interesting shape. Um, it's kind of got the, uh, the, the cubby holes where we can put stuff. Um, we can't put statues because it's a temple, but you get the idea, right? Looks more interesting. I don't know, maybe that's just a cope on my part, but uh, I, 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 prefer, I prefer it. I prefer it to have like a, an interesting sort of shape uh, than just to be, you know, just to be whatever. Because again, it's a temple. On the front line, tackling the green menace. <laughs> Well, you know, we need to tame this uh, godforsaken wilderness, don't we? We need to tame. Uh, we need to tame all the godforsaken creatures that exist in this place. Uh, you know, all these uh, whimsical and mischievous creatures. We need to put them in their in their place. So uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna pay, we're gonna tear down heaven and turn it into a car park. That's what we're gonna do. And we're going to start by building temples to our dark gods. Um, we're going to have a new set of gods, actually. Um, we're not going to have any dwarves here worshipping God the Subtle. Uh, because this is a different civilization than the previous one. So I'm imagining we'll have um, some, some, different, some different gods here. It'll be interesting to see what kind of gods they worship. 
Um, so we'll see that in a bit. And uh, the other thing we could do as well is, why don't we build a tavern? You know, we've not done that yet. We've not done that before. We could build a tavern. We could build it all the way up here, perhaps. Again, I'm a bit cautious about digging this out because I'm, I'm worried that it's going to turn out that this is all flawed. Um, but maybe we could build a tavern up here. I have a feeling that this is the aquifer layer and that we just dug underneath it. I have a feeling that this is the aquifer layer and we're just dug underneath it. So I think this is safe to dig out. Um, I am still worried about it. I think what I might do is um, doors. Uh, put doors here and here. And uh, walls, the uh, site material. So what we might do is uh, I'll make some doors so that I can I can block this off if I do ac accidentally breach the aquifer, right? I can I can close all this down if we do accidentally breach the aquifer, because we can shut the doors and then water won't flow flow through them. <laughs> Flora and fauna in their museum exhibit behind the glass. Yeah, that, well, that's, you know, so that, so that we can uh, show our children and teach them, uh, you know, show them how disgusting these things are and uh, why they're to be feared. Uh, let's make a new detail. We're going to do a stone engraving detail. Um, so we're going to set this up as engravers. And we're just going to set this up because I don't want everyone to engrave. Um, so we'll set you up. Um, we do have one of a miner. He doesn't have any skill at engraving, but we'll tell him he's allowed to as well. Because I just want my miners to be my engravers. And uh, we need to make more beds. We've uh, we've already hit bed capacity. Uh, we got see we got we got twenty two featherwood beds in storage, so uh, we got plenty of beds for days. Oh, we haven't. We ran out of doors though, so we need to get back on our door making grind. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's all great down here. So why don't we tell them to start um, smoothing this all out? Just smooth all that out, because this is the uh, this is going to be where our temples are, and uh, we'll then set these up as temples. So uh, although I can't see anything because the, the 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 smoothing things in the way, so I have to wait uh, until it's gone so I can see what I'm doing. Fun times lie ahead. Maybe we, you know, we've yet to encounter a unicorn, um, but when we find one, um, I'm sure that we'll have fun with it. Is this guy starving to death? I'm, I haven't actually checked. He, he says he's healthy, um, so maybe he doesn't need to eat. And no, he he wouldn't do, would he? Because like in fortress mode, only dwarves need to eat in fortress mode, um, which is kind of like a workaround for the fact that you can just cave, you can just cage things up forever. So yeah, he's just gonna stay in his little in his little hole until we decide that we're going to kill him. Uh, him, him or her. Um, our giantess's trap avoid. Oh, no, that is an interesting question. Is a giantess a trap avoid creature? Could we put one in a cage trap? Could we put one in an iron cage and then we could dump it into a pit and then we could make people fight it for fun? Like... Now that, is, now, now that raises some interesting possibilities, doesn't it? That that's worth considering, because it could very well be the case that um, it is a trap avoid, that it isn't trap avoid, um, which means that we can uh, potentially, um, you know, uh, have some fun there. Gonna just prepare some lavish meals. Alright, let's set up our kitchen again. So kitchen. Yeah, I want them to be able to cook quarry quarry leaves, drinks. I don't want them to cook any of my drinks. Um you can cook all these things though. No seeds. Yeah, and don't cook. We have cave wheat and pigtails, but they're not being brewed. Set on repeat. Process plans. Spin thread. No needs empty food storage item. 
Uh, make barrels. Do that and repeat for a bit. Brew drink from plant. Um, oh yeah, this is why we were going to appoint a manager, wasn't it, as well? Yeah, giants, aunts, trap, avoid, cage is a go. Okay, excellent. So yeah, that means that what we'll do, we probably won't do it for a bit, because we, you know, we're not in a rush to do it. Um, but what we can do is we can, uh, we can cage the, we can cage the giant, and we can build a giant arena. Um, and then instead of killing the giant ourselves, what if we were to throw a bunch of goblins into the arena and make the goblins fight the giants? Now that would be interesting. Um, that would be, I would say, um, an exciting, uh, spectacle. We'll do that. We'll do that at some point. We're going to, at some point, you know, we got, we got it right where we want it. Nitro is a manager. Nitro is traditionally our bookkeeper. Um... <laughs> Tradition is that Nitro is the bookkeeper, although we haven't been doing that. I don't think we're going to do that. Nitro said that he would stream Dwarf Fortress when Steam Dwarf Fortress came out, and he hasn't done it yet, so hopefully he does it soon. <laughs> um, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll appoint a different bookkeeper, how about that? Apparently he doesn't want to take part in Dwarf Fortress. All right. So, um, yeah, we can start. So this is going to be uh, our first, um, this will be our first, our first temple here. Why don't we make the doors in the temple out of iron? We'll make, we'll make the things in the temple out of iron. Like, that's a really godly sort of metal. In fact, there's platinum. I know where there's platinum on this map. Um, we could, we could, it's, it's, it was on the surface. Um, tetrahedrite, tetrahedrite. Native platinum here. There's a big chunk of naked, native platinum here. Um, so this here is all native platinum. So we could dig this out. That's tetrahedrite, tetrahedrite, tetrahedrite. And we can make some doors out of platinum or some statues out of it. Or maybe a platinum altar. Although I think it's going to be three bars of platinum to one uh, bit of platinum here. And uh, we'll dig that one out. I know that's going to let the chickens out, but that's fine. We can always just build the, the, the wall there as soon as it's gone. Yeah, so we've got, um, we got six chunks and little bits of platinum here. Hidden amidst the tetrahedrite. You can barely tell the difference, right, between the tetrahedrite walls and the platinum walls. But I noticed it earlier when I was, like, massing over stuff. Um, so we got a little bit of platinum there. <laughs> okay, you can be our bookkeeper. Um, we'll appoint those now, actually, because we need to get that done. Um, I mean, being a bookkeeper doesn't prevent you from doing other things, actually. Um, so it's it's fine. Like, um, I need to look at these guys' skills. So this guy here, for example, he's like an adequate mason. I don't even know what mason's used for anymore. He's also a spinner and a cook and a stone cutter. Let's let's go this one. We'll we'll make this guy into our manager. Not our manager, sorry, our bookkeeper. You'll need an office. And then we're also gonna need a manager. Um so we got a load of woodcutters. Uh, I don't know if any of these woodcutters are any good. This guy's only an adequate woodcutter. Then again, like maybe we don't take any of these guys off woodcutting duty. You know, that's such a obviously such an important task for them. That guy's an animal dissector. Uh This guy's uh this guy is definitely gonna be our broker, right? Like, no no doubt about it. He's a competent appraiser. Um and then manager can be um we'll just go with like one of these randos. Like uh not Iden, because that's our Fisher. Um We'll just go with Thob. I don't know who Thob is. Thob, you're now the officer. You're now the... Uh... So yeah, we'll need to make a couple of uh, studies for them. 
But anyway, enough of that. So this this area over here, that's going to be our first... Uh, this, except... It's going to be a temple. And we'll say this... So these are the gods. So we've got Dalek, who is the god of speech, persuasion, poetry, writing, and scholarship. Utos, the pale glimmer. He is the god of day and light. Ugaf, pulp burial, the god of deformity and disease. Ast, the whirling, the god of hunting and fishing. Tolman, the lovely good, who is the god of generosity. Muslim, twilight dreams, who is the god of rumours. Baal, fresh tongs, the young. Um, his name's too long for me to see it all. He's the god of fertility and food. Likot, the god of jewels. Thukan, the god of death and rainbows. <laughs> the sprayed, who is the god of wealth, trade... Water, nature, the sun, the dawn, twilight, and dusk. Alnis Stud Legends, who is the god of fortresses and war. And Id Branded Gems, the granite, who is the god of earth, mountains, volcano, and fire. Thukan, the god of death and rainbows. He is Sukan the Aquadust, that's his full name. Um, let's go with Dalek, though, because he is the most worshipped dwarf in our fortress at the moment. There's only there's only one person who worships him as well. He's he, he, <laughs> there's only a single dwarf. It's not like our last fortress where we had loads of dwarves who worshipped the god of death, who was called Odd the Subtle. But yeah, a god of death and rainbows. That's incredible. <laughs> Hold on. Um, I, I'm not sure how we can do this. Is there any way that we can like look at his details? Um, I don't think there is really. Is there? Like. Uh, I'm not sure that we can. I wonder who's the dwarf who worships him. I'd have to like go through every single one of my dwarves to figure it out. Like, uh, like who do you worship here? You worship Basan, Utos, the Muslim, Baal, Dolek. But you can't click on any of these to get the details of the gods. I guess if we were to make a statue of him, then we would see what you what what we would see like what form or appearance that god takes. Could be it could be a female form actually. We we will commission a statue of Thukan because I'm curious. I want to know what Thukan looks like. Winter is upon us. Uh, has the water frozen? No. It'll be. It's important to check and see whether water freezes on this map or not. Uh, but when it is winter now, so maybe water is going to freeze at some point. And uh, we said that we'd dig out a tavern, didn't we? Um, that was another thing that we said we would do. So we could we could dig out a really big tavern over here and have like um, an area to stockpile booze uh, kind of like here. So we'd have like a booze stockpile here and then we'd have the tavern here. So we could do that. And then that way we would have like a place for our dwarves to hang out. But, um, you know, it's kind of it's kind of far away from our actual fortress. And then what we could also do as well is we can then put some... There's a rock here. There's two rocks that keep... There's a rock wedging this door open. Um, I'm going to set that to dump. Just going to quickly make a... Garbage dump here. So someone moves that, that dark... That dark uh, sorry, that rock out of the doorway. Praise be to the god of rainbows and death. Yeah. <laughs> It's an appropriate sort of god for this sort of biome, right? <laughs> so yeah, we could have this be a tavern. Alright, so... Um, I have a, I've had the task set up to make doors for ages to stop that for now, because I've probably got more than enough doors by now. Um, we need we need doors in all of our bedrooms. Just so much to do all the time. You never you never finish with this game. It's one of the things I like about it. There's not really any down moments. Wait, did I only have three doors for? Did I only make five doors? Okay, never mind. Maybe I didn't make as many doors as I thought I'd made. But there's 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 not ever any sort of like downtime. There's like uh, plenty of uh, 
stuff that we can do, um, you know, or be doing. So it's always nice in that respect is that, you know, you, you, you have plenty going on at any given time. Um, so that, that that's one of the things that I quite like about this game. Let's just make a couple of offices here. We can make an office here. We'll make an office here. A deadly leprechaun lure the dwarves into the never any search for the rainbow end. <laughs> well, we, we don't need to go to the end of the rainbow to find gold because we can just find platinum in the walls, you know? Like, uh, uh, we're, we're, we're fine in that sense. All right. Let's, uh, Let's make some doors. We'll make two more doors. Uh, we'll make um, make two tables. Then we'll make uh, two uh, chairs out of wood. So why not? These seem to become a mill. Uh, okay. Has his name changed? Who? Oh God! Is why is his name changed? No, Bralix. Yeah, it is still Bralix. Okay. So why did he say he became a militia commander? He was already a militia commander. He still got almost all of his equipment on. Wait, why is he got? Why is he crying? I feel so good. Then, 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 why, why, why are you, why are you crying? Okay, whatever. Uh, the more I think about dwarves, the 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 less good it gets. You know, like I just uh, I just need to let them do their own thing and just not not worry about whatever whatever daft stuff is going on in their little brains. British man can't comprehend joy. <laughs> uh, it's not that. Jaws are just, you know, they're just uh, just mysterious creatures sometimes. You know, they, 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 they feel very passionately about things. You know, he's, he's, he's drinking alcohol, he's feeling joy, you know, I can't you know, I can't, I can't say I've ever had that experience myself, but maybe one day, right? Maybe if I'm lucky. Let's get the chairs in. And just a couple of doors here and a door here. So this is just going to be very basic offices. I mean, they don't need to be that good or anything. Um, yeah, so we've got some basic offices here. So now we'll be able to assign those. So we'll assign, um, we'll just set this on multi. So it automatically does them both. So this one here will go to um, our bookkeeper. And this one here will go to our manager. Excellent. And then that will mean that they'll start doing their jobs. And uh, we can then set up some work orders. So, uh, for example, we can set up a work order for... Um, Barrels. So we could say uh, make out of uh, wooden barrels. Wooden barrels. So make, let's say make uh, 20 wooden barrels. Um, and then we set the conditions on this. We don't really care what they make them out of, but we want it so that if there is less than 10 available wooden bar empty barrels, make 20 more. Um, so that's a very basic setup order for now. Um, we'll then make a new order, which will be for brewing, drink, and plant. So, um, so this one here, um, if there's uh, if the amount of the drinks available is less than, let's say if it's less than uh, less than a hundred, 
And it's less than 100 drinks. Actually, we can set this really high, because, like... There's no such thing as having too many drinks. We can set this up to, like, 500. If it's less than 500, then... I don't know, brew 10? <laughs> uh, brew... Uh, cancel that. And brew... 20? Yeah, we'll go with that. Creatures. No, uh, I'm doing that wrong. Yeah, and uh, I'll actually stick an order on that. Amount of uh, unrottable plants. We'll just add this to 20 so that it's not spamming because if there's not enough plants. I have to go to the store and pick up some expired food. Might come back later. Catch you later. All right, see you later. Um, it's good to see you, though. How do we run out of dimple cup seeds? Or pelmet seeds? Yeah, I've got, we've got loads of pelmets. One, two, three, three. How is that not satisfied? We got we got greater than twenty of those. I'll just get rid of that. Oh, it should be satisfied for the next check anyway. So those are two basic ones done. We probably need to settle some more. Oh, and it looks like the river does freeze, which means that if we ever needed to mine anything out on the river. Or at least part of it freezes, not all of it. So uh, part of the river freezes, and part of it doesn't. Um... What? Oh, I, I know what it is. I know what it is. So this dwarf here, she's, she's trying to fish up here. Um, because if we go to her labours and standing orders, uh, basically for... They'll say prefer zone for fishings. We only want them to fish in designated zones. So she's trying to fish up here because she wasn't able to fish down here briefly. Because this part froze before the other part did. So we need to make sure that she doesn't do that. Um, there's also a potential issue here where... Um... There's a potential issue here where they might try and walk up the river to get into the fortress. So I'm just going to set all of this as like... You know, this is forbidden. It's, I don't want them walking on the river. Um, it's dangerous. So uh, they shouldn't try and walk on this river in order to get somewhere um, outside. I mean, it was always unlikely that they would, but it's just better to be safe than sorry on these things. So um, we've got all of our temple rooms done. We've only assigned one temple, so let's assign the rest. We'll assign this one up here. I'm going to assign this one to um, or toss the Pale Glimmer, the Silvery Cathedral, and uh, we'll then assign a new meeting area over here. And uh, this will then go to who we've got. He's a popular god. Um, Nikost, the god of jewels. He's got eight worshippers. Then we'll set a new meeting area here. I'll assign this as a new temple, and we'll assign this to... I don't know. Who's popular? Let's go with uh, Tolan, the lovely god. He is the god of, god of generosity. He's a popular god as well. He's got six worshippers at the moment. So that's where things stand at the moment. Um, you know, nothing too bad. Um... Add a chase of giant ravens. It begins... Oh god, there's a lot of them. I see that you've been interrupted by an agitated giant raven. We do have our military dwarf here. Um, so let's... Uh...
Let's move you here. Let's pull this lever here. And uh, pull this lever. Uh, yeah. So you pull that lever outside. I'm like, uh, I don't want to get killed by agitated giant ravens this time. They were just flying around outside the fortress. Is anyone outside at the moment, or is everyone inside? I need to set up like a Boros. Um... All right, so he's killed one. He's he's attacking one of the giant ravens. Uh, the other dwar the other dwarves are coming in to punch them. They killed three of the agitated giant ravens. Uh, Brelix, he feels um. Let's see. Uh, elf ability to stand lost. Um, oh god, he's uh, been badly damaged, but he has killed three of them, which is kind of what we needed him for. Um, it looks like we got all of them. I don't know if the rest have fleed or if they've just all been killed. So um, we're going to have to start building a hospital now. But the first the first round of agitated ravens or agitated creatures has been killed. So uh, we can we can rest easy now. He's killed three giant ravens, and then I'm guessing someone else has gotten the kill uh, on those. Um, we'll just let it tick for a bit and see if anyone else is going to show up. God, like... Yeah, I can see four dead ravens here. Oh. Okay, it's definitely gone. All right, it's definitely gone. We can go to our creatures tab. We can see dead missing. So, yeah. Um, and a dead sturgeon. So, one, two, three, four, five agitated dead ravens have all been killed. Um, they should all be being butchered as well, which is uh, great. You know, that's going to be free money. Um, let's cancel that order. So, he is injured though, and we're going to need to, we're going to need to build a hospital. Um, so the, now this is the thing, because now the water's frozen over. Um, we actually are not going to have access to any um, any water because they'll need to bring him water. It is only early winter as well, so it's going to take a little bit before the water unfreezes. So I actually want access to water. It's a shame this didn't happen in autumn or or summer because he's it takes a little bit of time for them to actually freeze to death. So where are we going to build this hospital? Um, this is the best layer to build the hospital on because it's directly above. Uh, Yeah, it's directly above here. So, like, this is the this is one hundred percent the best level to build this on. Um, so we could do it up here, for example. Have like a hospital here. One, two, three, four, like that, perhaps. Um, and it doesn't need to be massive, but it should be fairly big. So we'd have like a hospital here, and what we would want is we would want it to have like a well in the center. So we would say that this would be the center spot here. So it would need to be the case that we channeled that. So... So we'd want the well here. That's in 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, that's the direct sensor here. So that'd be where we'd want the hospital to be.
let's build a floodgate. So let's uh, go over here and build. Um, we got this on making wooden barrels, which we shouldn't do because we should have the wooden barrels order set up. So we don't actually need that anymore. Um, let's make a floodgate. So we'll set up a task here. Oh, we can do this through here, can't we? So um, I, we only need one floodgate or two floodgates. So we'll just do it this way. So uh, make. Make a rock floodgate, and then make a floodgate out of rock. We'll make two floodgates. What I'm going to do is so um, on this side here, I'm going to make a very small staircase just over here. Put it here. Like that. Alright, so um, so we've got this channel here, and uh, we're going to basically dig this along here to here. Actually, no, that's dangerous. That's a dangerous way to do it. Um, cancel that. That would have been the best way to do it, actually. And uh, let's just uh, channel the rest of this out here. Yeah, so we're going to channel this out. And basically what I'm doing is I'm making a channel for uh, water to come into the into the area. So um, we'll then just remove uh, these ramps here. Except for the last one there. Then here, so um, we'll then dig here and here. So this is ice here. So you can see here, uh, this is now. Um, well, it will be when they dig that. I think. So that's now under the river. So the ice, the, the water will flow down here, um, and then that's why we got the floodgates. So um, we can then place a couple of floodgates. Um, we'll place one, place one here. Then we'll place one here. Actually, we need to place one at a time, so we'll cancel that one because we need to get someone to link it up to mechanisms. Um, so someone should go and place that then. Yeah, they're all trying to give water, but they can't. Right. Um,
Yeah, we're going to need some mechanisms, aren't we? Couple mechanisms. One, two, three. Five, six. All right. Well, let's at least uh, let's at least set this as a hospital zone. Because even if we can't, you know, maybe we can start treating him. Um, so um, we need to set this up. We want this to be. It's a meeting area now, isn't it? It's now a meeting area, right? I think if that's correct. And then assign this to a new hospital. So the home of basements. Um, so we need to assign a chief medical dwarf. Uh, I'm going to assume that we have nobody who has got any medical skills whatsoever. Um, so we're just going to have to pick somebody to be a a, a doctor. So uh, um, Kogan, you can be our doctor. And uh, we now want to set up some uh, doors and beds and things. So beds, uh, we just want to have one. We're just basically a decent amount of beds in here, right? So we'll set up some beds in here. We'll also need some chests. So why don't we do that next? We'll set up... Uh... I'll, make th I'll just make them out of wood. Wooden chest is fine. Wooden chest. Make... Um... Make five wooden chests just out of oak. It's a one-time thing. We'll set him as a doctor. We're also going to need some tables in there as well. I don't want to have relics die from uh, agitated giants. Uh... Ravens or whatever, that'd be an inglorious way to go. So uh, let's try and get all this done ASAP. There are beds in here, so I'm not sure why no one's moved into a bed. Is there anyone who's got a task to like recover wounded? Struck building, update stop power records, diagnose patient. There's a diagnose patient task, but no one's set to do it. Maybe doctors don't diagnose. That might be an issue. They've changed the way that this works a little. Um, so let's click on here. Let's uh, set this here. We have got Kogan. What, what is Kogan doing, actually? Maybe that might be the issue. Um, he's trying to give water. Uh, that's under tasks orderly. So I don't want him to give water. I want him to try and diagnose the patient. Uh, wait, wait, which sentence is this? <laughs> Freeport. This creature is a doctor. About Brax and not wishing him death. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do you actually need three dwarfs, though, Tap Dancing Ninja? Or um, does he need to have a separate uh, person to diagnose him? 
Um, no, that's just a guy. Wait. Okay, he, he, he is, um, alright, it looks like he was okay, it looks like he was just dented, um, which I think is recoverable, I guess. Um, he's been given a crutch, though, um, doesn't look like he's lost any limbs as our, as our relics. Like, um, let's see, health, ability to stand lost. He was evaluated and he was given a one wood crutch. So I guess that's okay. How we got no pump helmet seeds? Oh, you know what? I actually know why. It's because I told them that they're not allowed to brew pump helmets. A doy. Um. Yeah, there we go. I told them that early because I didn't want them to brew loads of pump helmets because um, I wanted them to brew things other than pump helmets at the time. I had my reasons. <laughs> One to diagnose, one to do surgery, or treat burn injuries, and one to doctor, I think. Well, in any case, he looks like he's up and about. I haven't stolen your points, Baron. I've been... I was uh, doing things. Baron, you can be the... You know what? You can be... You can be the chief medical dwarf. How about that? That happened so quickly. And we literally just had, like, um... Where did these agitated, uh... There's, there's one more left. Over here. They're coming in through here, I know that much. Um... Well, that dwarven child is dead, and Commissar Kitty is also dead. Confirm. All right. Well, um, this uh, this uh, this this woodcutter has killed off uh, that last uh, peregrine falcon man. So, uh, yeah, that's great. Um, but it looks like we lost uh, two of our dwarves, at least. Uh, at least we killed them. We're going to have to dump their bodies somewhere. Um, we could do with a proper dumping area, really. I guess we'll just we'll just stick them outside for now. So, uh, uh, that was really quickly, like, one after the other. That was a real sort of uh, tense... Moments. Dump that. Let's dump that. There's a giant raven head here that's like rotting as well. Um, we can't make a peregrine falcon man crash with a corpse, unfortunately. What do you mean? 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 That there's no 
plants that we can make. Uh, have we got an update? Uh, what do we put garments then? Oh, I clicked on the cup and I didn't click on the... Uh, okay, yeah, that's me being dumb. Alright, ignore that. Uh, no, the fortress is just um, to try and get a better understanding of how savage biomes are and exactly how savage they are. Um, which we're getting a little bit of a crash course in, uh, you know, as we speak, basically. Um, you know, because as you can see, it is, in fact, incredibly savage down here. Um, but um, it was just to settle in the um, the kind of, uh, you know, those kind of more dangerous biome, but one that hopefully wasn't going to kill us as quickly as the other ones have. So that was the kind of, that was the kind of goal anyway. Um, we're going to now have to make some... Um, make some uh, tombs. This is, this is this is going to be like Balin's tomb uh, in in Moria, except uh, nobody notable is buried in it. Oh, I shouldn't say that, should I? That's really rude. <laughs> I'm sorry, Commissar Kitty, if you're still here. Um, you 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 are incredibly notable. Um, I am gonna. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna give each dwarf their own uh, tomb as well, um, because I said earlier that I want this to be a really ostentious little fort. Um, normally I build like one big communal tomb and just put everyone in it. Uh, but this fort, we're actually going to go out of our way to make this into a really fancy, uh, into a really fancy fort. We can make some instruments out of giant, uh, like we've got um, okay, one of the things we're going to do. Sorry, I've, I'm trying to think. So pull that, no, don't pull it, uh, link it to this here. So we're going to build a well here. Let's, um... Let's start making some charcoal. Let's start, let's start smelting some stuff. I haven't even cut down that many trees. Uh, well, it's time for us to cut down some trees, I guess. Um, we'll cut that down. There's a tree here that can be cut down. And clearly, if we're going to get attacked, we need to cut them down, right? Tomb, same dimensions as the bedrooms, yeah. Well, you know. Um, big tombs, big bedrooms. Uh... It's the way we're doing things here, and uh, we need to make some coffins as well, don't we? Before I forget, so let's uh, let's make a couple of coffins. So we'll make a rock coffin, and we'll make a rock coffin. Um, details. We'll make these out of uh, we'll make these out of microlene. We're not going to make coffins out of uh, clay stone because that'd be lame. Make microlene coffins for now. Hey, Kaladin, welcome. You're not the first person to die this time. <laughs> in death as in life, yeah. Their duty isn't over yet, although their corpses are still on the on the staircase, so you know, there is that. Um What we'll do is we'll set up a restraint here. And then we'll stick the war dog on here. Welcome back, uh Feke. Uh you are alive. You're both alive in the fortress and you're um alive um in real life. That's good to see. Kaladin, uh, yeah, you can be you can be the broker Kaladin. How about that? Uh, assign. So put a war dog on here. All right. So how coffins are taking their time to make? Like it, it'd be nice if they hurried that up, considering that you know the corpses are just rotting on the staircase at the moment.
would be an excellent broker, that's good to hear. Oh, wait, did I close the entire fortress to them? Did I prevent them from going outside? I can't remember, did I? No, I didn't close this door, so they can get down. I mean, I might as well open the other door. Oh, now the corpses are rotting. Pull that lever, so I'm going to the miasma and to do that. Why does it take them so long to make coffins? These should be, they should be well practiced at this by now. Alright, let's start getting some coffins down. Furniture. Burial. Alright, well, there's the first coffin. What kind of doors we got available? We don't have any doors available at the moment. Make 10 micro lean doors for me. Been playing this game way too much lately. I mean, it's a great game to play. Like, you know, you can't go wrong with this game, honestly. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's a great game to be playing. So, uh, yeah. I've, I've been playing it on and off for, for many years at this point. I'm still pretty bad at it, I would say. But, uh, you know... Uh, that, that, that's what's nice about the game, though, is that there's always new things to learn. There's whole, there's whole things that I've never done in this game. I've never done that much with minecarts, for example. Um, that's something that I've never really had much experience with, but you can do quite a lot with them. Um, it's something I might try at some point in this, because now that... Um, now that, now that like, um, it's a bit easier to do that kind of stuff, it'd be interesting to try that out, wouldn't it? Like, uh, you know, get some... Uh, get some Get some minecart, you know. Get some Minecraft, Minecrafts, Minecrafts, uh, minecarts done. Um, it's the the rule is one dwarf per fortress, Feke. Um, so that if you die in the game, you you're you're done for that fortress. But then when the new fortress starts, which is usually pretty soon after the original one, uh, you can then name a dwarf in that fortress. All right, and it looks like my drawbridge wasn't raised. I thought my drawbridge has started raised, but um, it looks like they changed how it works. So uh, they've actually just flooded the entire access corridor uh, before I was ready because I was too busy dealing with this junk. Uh, but that's fine. I mean, it doesn't really matter. That 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 could be flooded. It doesn't really make any difference to me. We'll close that drawbridge anyway, and then uh, I wanted that space to, so that we could make a um, so we could make a um, a well. Right, we've got the first coffin done. Go to tomb. Undo. And let's get a door in. There we go, we'll get the first tomb here. So that's going to be the first tomb. So that'll be assigned to one of the two dead dwarves and they'll start moving his corpse and everything downstairs. I remember the days when I used to keep a dead dwarf counter on the screen. I had like a counter and I'd say how many dwarves had died and how many elves had died or how many of this had died. Um, but I haven't done that in a while. It's a, it's a bit of a pain to micromanage, but um, always fun when you do it. You know, just seeing... just seeing. Uh... I mean, it's fine anyway because it's not going to... It won't it won't go up the stairs, right? So, um, And also when it freezes again, we could probably go down there. If we wanted to, um, and like you know, reseal it up. I was going to have two floodgates, so one here and like one here. Um, but to be honest, I only really need one here. I think. Why is there a kiwi hen? Why is there agitated kiwi hens? An agitated skunk as well. I mean, agitated, agitated um, skunks and things, that's fine, right? Like, There's something under this door, isn't there? 
Yeah, don't that. <laughs> the DP players man <laughs> complaining about my command uh, I I'm allowed to complain about whatever I want, okay? Alright, Commissar Kitty. Alright, though there's dead skunk on the on the stairway. <laughs> I think Baron von Porn killed it. Are they gonna are they gonna move these corpses? Are they gonna actually like um Commissar Kitty's corpse, is anyone ever gonna move it off the staircase? Or is sorry, it's a mangled skeleton. Uh, we don't have any metal. Um, it's joyous wilds. It's joyous wilds. Um, we don't have any uh, metal working dwarves at the moment, Tacticum. Come on, can someone please move the corpse off the staircase? Uh, literally anyone. I need more migrants, I need more people to come do stuff. See, it's just saying, I don't know, they're probably too busy drinking or sleeping or praying. No one's killed a broker yet. Fish by a falling power of gold. All right, it's early spring. Let's see. Let's see. Migrants, migrants. Big migrant wave. Lots of migrants. We had 17 doors before. Two of them had died. Their corpses are still on the staircase. Sometimes I wish you could do the. Uh, I, I I I do kind of wish that we could do the. Um... You know the um the sorry the the, the room world thing of just like clicking on a guy and telling him to do it. I haven't accidentally set this up so that no one's doing it right. No, everybody is hauling, so everybody should be capable of it. Just click on a guy and be like, you just move the corpse. Do you have a start path for corpses? I don't need a start path for corpses. Because um, that's not the issue. Uh, the issue is just like... The, the issue is that everybody's planting all the time, actually. That's probably the main issue. So, like, loads of people are planting. Um, when really, uh, let's just tell everybody, like, these two guys to do it. Uh, you can plant. But, like, the fact that... I don't need everybody to always be planting all the time. Like, uh, like my manager, for example... They can do other things like haul corpses, for example. Or construct buildings. That kiwi here. I need that dumped outside, for example. Our queen door is completed. Excellent. Or a tomb if he's a colonist. I do have a tomb. That's what I have. I have, I have one tomb. I, I should have a second, but again, they're, they're being slow at, at, at doing things. Um, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, that's going to change soon. Oh. Yeah, come on. I'm separated from... Oops. Were you married to, like... Were you married to one of the dwarves that died? No, okay. No, you, 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 you're upset about missing your mother, I think. A bunch of charcoal. Um... 
don't really need any charcoal right now. I was going to use the charcoal to start making some metal, but like um, at the moment, I just really, really want them to. Okay, finally, we're getting a door built. That's a start. Okay, one of the corpses has finally been moved off the staircase, which is great, because like every the thing is, is it should be such a high priority thing for them to do, because every time they move past it, it's going to upset them, right? They're going to walk past the corpse and they'll be like, oh, woe is me, I saw a corpse, I feel bad about it. Like, th there's this other corpse that's just lying in the bed here, so that's why I really want them to move it. Like, this agitated peregrine falcon man skeleton is propping open a doorway over here. Um... But instead of dealing with it, they're, they're doing literally everything else. Like drinking and sleeping and fishing. How many rock craft? Oh god, we've had this set to just make rock crafts all this time and I've just ignored it. Um, let's cancel that. Probably got loads of rock crafts now. Um, we should actually be making... Um, so what we should actually do is we should set a task up here to uh, make a shell decorate. So we could make... Um, we got loads of shells, right? So we could set up a task to make shell. Uh... So we can set up a task to make shell bracelets because we've got a bunch of shells here. Like one, two, three, four, five, six of them. So we can set up that task and then somebody will just make some crafts out of shells whenever they get the chance. I've not lost any of our nobles. Classic avoidance. I could do I could do without all these creatures and that tangled greenery. I you know what, I, I share your exact thoughts on this actually. I, I, I agree completely. I could also do without it. Um, that is a, that is the thought I share. Oh, we attracted no migrants. Oh my god, that's probably because we have very low value. Um, we haven't really generated much in the way of value, but we really wanted those migrants to show up so that somebody would. Um, oh, we actually have to designate that. This one's our fault. Uh, let's designate that tomb. Yes, yeah, so we got another tomb. So someone should come and bury uh, the the dwarf child whose uh, corpse is still in the, <laughs> still in the hospital. <laughs> Um, so what are we going to do? We look at, oh, this is so ages ago. Right, let's uh, start making, let's start making some metal. That's, that's one thing we need to do. Um, I don't have any dwarves that can make metal smiths. We don't need all these woodcutters. Um, Melville here can be our first metal smith. Uh, I did say ages and ages and ages ago that I would make, um, who was it? It was Baron von Porn. No, Baron von Porn requested a new dwarf. It was Earl von Vommer, yeah, that was it. Um, I'm confused. I'm confusing my barons and my pawns here. Uh, and, my, and my earls. I, was, I said I'd make him into a weaponsmith, but we still don't need a metalsmith. Well, we may as well. We may as well start. Um, so this guy, Melville, Melville here, he will be our first uh, blacksmith. I really like letting everyone smith some moves, make weapons and armor more. That's true, but we're not gonna we're not due for a mood at least straight away. So for the time being, uh, I'm just gonna make one guy uh, do all of the all of the metal smithing because I don't know when I'm gonna get migrants. Um, I just know that we can't get a strange mood with the amount of migrants that we got. So if we make it so that we just have one guy who is who is like the 
the, the metal crafter for now, right? We'll have him do all kinds of metal crafting except furnace operating. Um, we'll, we'll let anyone furnace operate. I don't care who does that. But we'll have him just be the the metal crafter. Then uh, that way we can, you know, we'll. Uh, You know, he, he will just be the metal crafter. Later on, we'll have more dwarves, and then at that point, we might consider doing that. Um, but for now, I'd rather just train one dwarf, um, you know, to do all those tasks when I've only got 15 anyway. Um, I don't know, it just seems... just seem, Maybe that's the wrong way to look at it. Maybe I should do it a different way. But uh, that just seems efficient to me. We have got a load of tetrahedrite as well. Uh, tetrahedrite is, a, is an ore of silver and copper, which means that we're just going to start by having him make a bunch of copper stuff because it's not, you know, he doesn't have to be very good at it. Um, so we're just going to start by making the first thing we're going to make copper chains. Uh, we're just going to make uh, a bunch of copper chains. Um, so we'll make a copper chain and we'll forge uh, five of those. We'll also set up an order to smelt tetrahedrite ore, and uh, we're going to set this order up so that um, if we've got uh, tetrahedrite and we've got coal, then smelt both of those. And uh, we'll set this order up here, um, just when the amount of copper bars is greater than five, just start making those copper chains. I don't actually want this on repeat, I want this to be a one-time order. I'm not going to need. I only. So I want the copper chains in order to make um, the, the the well in the hospital. Oh, what's the purpose of the chains? Uh, to make the well in the hospital, but I might as well make four extra chains because I can use those for chaining up dogs, and I can also use them in traction benches. Um, so we want to have a couple of traction benches in here as well. Um, so actually, we need to finish putting stuff in here. So we'll put a couple of chests in the corners. Uh, we got a couple of them here. Um, we want to have a few more tables in here. Put two tables in there, and then we can make two traction benches with the other two tables. Um, and we need we need one for the well as well. Um, Dennis Wolf here has got no health problems, but he seems to be sleeping or. Find tastefully arranged bed. I'm not sure what he was doing up there, but he was doing something. Something important, no doubt. Relic's here looks like he's um he's recovered fully from his uh from his last encounter, although it says his ability to stand has been lost. His left foot is dented and his right hand is dented. So he is getting better because he had a whole bunch of dents before. But I guess whilst his left foot is dented, he can't stand very well. Um, he's a competent dancer and a novice poet. He's a competent crutch walker as well. Um, yeah, crutch walking is its own skill in Dwarf Fortress, didn't you know? Um... I hate how this pops up. It's because we got two of these fisheries. I'm just going to get rid of one of the fisheries. It pops up because it's tasking both fisheries and then it gets cancelled in one of them because there's only raw fish for one fishery. Uh, no, because I think the I think the dents will fix themselves. I think he'll recover um, because he's he's not he's not had anything like too disastrous, right? So I think I think he'll be fine in the long run.
We got a bunch of raven man bones. We should use those for something. Process panther bag. I need to set up a task for processing quarry, but but oh, this is still not dumped. Uh, I guess maybe because it's making you dump zone, but still um, garbage dump. Wait there, except. There's the, the there's a skeleton that's just wedging this door open. I need them to dump it. Oh, that's too far away. I'm just gonna dump this in this. Okay, so we haven't forged the copper chains yet, but someone should be smelting the tetrahedrite ore, or at least as soon as... I guess as soon as someone's through to do it. Store item in location. Just got so many dwarves doing things that they don't need to be doing. Oh, we can tell you, we can tell Baron that he's allowed to do things other than woodcutting and uh, doctoring now, because we don't need him to doctor so much. So we'll take him off of that. Wait, why are you trying to store and stop power? Oh, God. They're trying to, they're trying to grab these logs, um, which have fallen into the water here. I've never seen them do this before. They should be able to figure out that these items are um, inaccessible. Also, I just realized I wasn't actually saying that as uh All right, I mean, no, it is says dumped. Okay, that is set to be dumped. Yeah, I have clicked on that. I thought maybe for a second I told, I'd forbidden the corpses instead of setting them to be dumped. No, they are set to dump. Hopefully now that they're not trying to... So that might have been the reason why they were not doing anything, because they're trying to grab these unreachable logs, maybe? I don't know if there's anything else they're trying to grab. It's unreachable. But, um... Possibly that was it. Yeah, he's planting. He's, he's doing those. They're growing the rock nuts there. Hmm. Asks. Oh, I set a standing order that's preventing them from doing it. Dumping. No, they should be dumping those corpses then. Oh, this is irritating. It's not showing up as a task in the task list, right? It's not showing up as a task over here, so... Oh no, two of them are. So so Kaladin is finally dumping one of the corpses outside. Um, oh, I forgot that we set a dump zone up here as well. Um, I don't need to have a dump zone right outside my fortress over here, so I'll get rid of that um, one that's at the top here. Uh, but still, I, you know, I want them to use it I want I want them to dump junk. Uh, okay, so um, we're in a pretty decent spot. I mean, we've had had a couple of uh, close encounters of the dangerous kind. Mm, we still got some wood. We could do with some more wood, but if we cut down more trees, we're going to agitate things even further. Is there anything dangerous on the map at the moment? 
Um, oh, there's agitated groundhogs, actually. So uh, we're about to have some... Uh... So we might uh, come and stick uh, our military commander, the Hail Wheels, to go and stand uh, here. I'm just stationing them there. Those agitated groundhogs could very well march into the fortress soon. Um, let's close this lever here so that there's only one way into the fortress. Um, I mean, there's this over here technically, but still. We've got Braddock's here ready to charge and attack if need be. Um, these guys don't seem that agitated, although maybe they're going to begin their assault now. I vote for defenses against the Groundhog Menace. Uh, we might just go and take the fight to them and just kill them before it becomes an issue, right? I butcher, butcher them, uh, cancel. Send in the BRBR. Be pro proactive. I mean, they're only Groundhogs, right? So, um, I think the BRBR should be able to, I think Relic should be able to kill them. He is a bit slow because he's using a crutch still, I think. So yeah, he's sl he's he slayed one of them. The militia commander hacks the agitated groundhog in the left rear paw with his iron battle uh, axe, tearing the muscle apart. And there he goes, chasing the other one around. Oh, our Fisher Dwarf has given birth. Uh, whilst all this was going on. Make sure craft's complete. You know, um, when crafts are made, um, the cat child... Oh, wait, yeah. So, Brax here has just finished uh, killing the other groundhog. So, uh, yeah. Whack-a-mole. Did someone say Groundhog Day? Uh, we're just... Um, Relic's here. He's like... Uh, did he ever actually equip... He didn't ever actually equip the... Um, the backpack. We made a backpack for him, but he's never equipped it. There is, we do have a backpack available for him, because I, I told one of my dwarves to make a backpack earlier. I guess if we go to equip and then update equipment, he'll go and collect a flask in the backpack. Which would be useful. Because you have got them, you may as well have them, right? Um, <laughs> right, so copper chains, we still haven't done that. We still haven't even smelted any tetrahedrite ore. Unless it's because, um, have I set the labor so they're only metal crafting? Let's see this one here. Um, furnace operating. Oh, wait, actually, I know the reason why. Oh, I'm an idiot. Okay, never mind. I am an idiot. Um, it's because I haven't actually built uh, anything for them to do. Um, so I haven't actually built them the forges and stuff. I did build the wood furnace. Uh, earlier, but I haven't actually built any of the other forges, so that's that's entirely my mistake. That one is. So let's uh, get those forges set up then, and then we'll be able to do that. Uh, I've just got, um, you know, I've just I'm basically just uh, dealing with so much at the moment that I'm like, uh, I'm like, I'm like missing these very very basic sort of things. I think that I think that's a sign that I need to like grab something to eat in a bit, and uh, you know. Um, Go and go and go and go and rest for a bit. But it's been a good stream so far. I think it's been an interesting one. And um, we've managed to kind of 
um, get the very basics done, and you know we've had some initial aggression from the wildlife. Uh, we've yet to see any unicorns. Um, we have got groundhogs of the non-agitated variety, which is always good. Would you like to watch some potion craft? Um, I'll probably go and do some other stuff for a bit, if I'm to be uh, frankly honest. So don't feel like you have to stream on my on my behalf. I mean, um, I'm not I'm not quite done yet. I'm just I'm just thinking like in, a, in maybe a few minutes or so. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna at least get I want to get at least get um, you know get these very basic stuff done. So I need to get a furnace up. We need to get um, probably get a couple of smelters up here as well and uh, we'll start making those uh, copper chains and get some copper bars done um you know all that kind of good stuff so we'll dig that out so i'll have plenty of space for all sorts of stuff and this is going to be a big stockpile for bars bars and stuff made out of metal we didn't even do any uh, jewels, did we? We talked about setting up some jewels earlier in the beginning of the game and setting up kilns and things, but I think when you've got like a fortress where you're having to worry about like not having many dwarves and um, you know, you've know you got an agitated wildlife attacking you, it's kind of hard to set those sorts of industries up just you know with, uh, with all that kind of stuff going on in the background. But now that we've got a smelter set up, we should have the task to smelt tetrahedrite or start... Yeah, there we go, popping up. So some dwarves will start getting on that, and then will uh, smelt that into into silver and copper for us. And uh, yeah, that'll be great to see. We got eleven dwarves who are kind of indifferent, and one dwarf who's kind of sad. Um, he's the kind of sad dwarf. Um, Darren here, upset because uh, uneasy after being unable to pray to your gods for too long. Uh, we'll probably need some more uh, need some more temples and stuff. And we need to set up that beautiful, beautiful cavern, which we dug an area for ages and ages and ages ago. And look here, just nothing in there. Um, why don't we set up a stockpile here for drinks? So we'll set up a drink stockpile here. Um, we'll just set this as, a, as, a, as, a, as every single type of food imaginable. Um, except for paste... Extracts, plant extracts, misc liquids, or seeds, or unprepared fish. So we'll set that up there. So this is going to be um, a tavern. And uh, why don't we start making some tables? We can make some copper tables, potentially. Silver tables, silver tables um, would be excellent, 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 excellent. There we go. We got three copper bars. We got some silver bars as well. So uh, yeah, we'll make a stockpile over here, just along this wall here, and this will just be a bars stockpile. So they'll stick all the bars of uh, copper, silver, whatever they make over here, and uh, you know that'll be great to see. And um, I know that we've got we've got um, we've got platinum as well, so I should also smelt the platinum. We got iron, but for now we'll stick to the copper because we just want to we want to we want to level up our dwarf, so we don't want him to use high value metals to do that. Um, so copper is perfect for that because you know if it's not if he doesn't make anything then that's useful. Like we could tell him to make the rest of Brelix's armor, for example. So we go to Brelix over here. Um, we go to his equipment. He's still not wearing the. Um, they're not wearing these, which I'm not sure why he's not. But we can make him um, some shoes, for example, some handwear. So we can make him a breastplate, uh, which you wear over the top. So we could uh, make him a breastplate and um, uniform replaces clothing. That's why he's not doing it. That matches only. And... Uh, you, we can make him some gauntlets and um, some low boots. We could even make him a shield. We can make him a buckler.
So we'll do those. Um, so we'll just set those up. So let's just start. So we'll make a copper breastplate. Um, we'll make a copper. Oh, no, we, he has gauntlet. He has greaves. He doesn't have gauntlets. We'll make a copper. Um, low boots. Armor, copper, and just a copper buckler as well. The more armor he has, the slower he'll be, and because he's still crutch walking, he's probably pretty slow. But I'm I'm pretty confident eventually he'll get past being needing to crutch walk everywhere. <laughs> he's finally wearing his water skin as well, which is excellent because um, we did give that to him ages ago. I told him to strip off everything, so he is wearing his full military gear. He's gone. He's getting himself some provisions. Um, he's got his plum wood crutch. We never set up these bedrooms, did we? That's something I didn't do ages and ages ago. Oh, well, it's summer now. Okay, it's uh, it's 9.30 almost. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, we'll I'll save the game here. Once it's finished auto-saving, I'll save it again. And uh, we'll quit the game for now. We've uh, gotten a good start on a new fortress. Things are hopefully looking up for us. Uh, but we'll see. Um, no doubt time and just, the, just, the, just the, the weight of everything will come crushing down and destroy us all in some horrific way that was entirely predictable. Uh, but until next time, I'll see you guys again in the future. Um, thanks everybody for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you have them, please make sure to follow and, uh, you know, we'll be back with some more of this. Um, we got plenty more of this to put, plenty more of Dual Fortress to play. We might do some other games as well. So, you know, keep an eye out for that and uh, I'll catch you guys again next time.